YouTube. Wholeness and Balance Vibrations, everyone. I am here and ready to deliver a very powerful connection today. I am looking on the YouTube side, though, however, and I need to clarify uh, that the stream is actually coming in and it still says waiting on my side. So I'm going to give it a moment. I do also see some notes coming in from YouTube. So that kind of means that um, maybe it's actually appearing live on the channel. So let me just give it a quick moment so we can notify those that are actually in the group or in the video created for today. Yeah, I see that now. That, okay, yeah, that should be Maybe live. it's actually appearing live. All right, all right. So I'm gonna drop a link over uh, to those that are in one chat just to make sure you're joining in because it looks like the links did switch up a little bit, but I guess that's just how it happens with live streaming. Bam. All right. So you have the link to the actual live chat if you're somehow in one and it just says that you're waiting there. Wow. OK, so uh, I'm going to do a quick sound test. That's why I'm jumping in here. I was trying to get in here a little early, <laughs> uh, but there was quite a, quite a bit to set up today. We're going to have a very amazing special time. So I have uh, my moderators on the other end. And all I want to clarify is just that we're not getting uh, a reverb on our audio. And uh, so I'm going to wait for that confirmation. And so this is just anyone really inside the chat. If you're listening to this and everything is all good, just let me know and we'll go ahead and get this thing started. All right. That's great. That's great. <laughs> okay. So let's get it started today. First and foremost, you know, it's a great time to be here for us all. Like these are amazing times that we're living in these days and there's really no telling what may happen. So just really centering into the space and enjoying each other is always key. We are going to begin in about four and a half minutes. So in between that time, you can take this opportunity to get some water, get some Palo Santo and some sage going, get your incense lit, you know, settle into the space because you're going to get some powerful wisdom today that's going to be super instrumental for your existence. So get yourself ready to receive that. If you're just coming in and you thought you missed it or there's still some anxiety there, go ahead and get that cleared up first and we'll go ahead and uh, be ready as the timer states on the screen. So thank you so much. Let's do it. Onus and balance vibration. We're standing on could have been at the, at the bottom of the sea a million years ago. And a million years from now, it could, it, it could be the interior of a huge mountain. Where is your tribe? My tribe. They live on another planet in another solar system. Even in your lies, some truth slips. That mythical community you're supposed to come from, Fort Wayne. What about it? A fort. Unconsciously, you chose a name that was belligerent. Where were you nurtured? All right, tribe. So we're going to go ahead and get started in about three minutes here. Sending love to everyone across the beautiful, beautiful organic space that we've created across infinity. Whew, today, there is a powerful presentation. It's the beginning of spiritual technologies. And you'll know what that means here in a moment. But go ahead and take your time, take a few breaths, really settle into yourself and realize that you have arrived into a great space. Sending much wholeness and love to everyone.
acid, glycerin, and a special mixture of my own. Together, it's horrible, dangerous stuff blows you up. But mixed together in the right way, as only I know how, what do you think it makes? I don't know, sir. Of course you don't know. You don't know, because only I know. If you knew and I didn't know, then you'd be teaching me instead of me teaching you. And for a student to teach his teacher, it's presumptuous and rude. Do you have a Yes, sir. Go yeah. hunger. There is no violence. The environment is healed. Honesty, courtesy, kindness are practiced by all. Our world has never been more perfect. Wholeness, 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 and balanced vibrations. Okay, so we up in here right now. It's 268 of us on the line and climbing. It's a great day to be in the space. You know, first and foremost, just sending love to everyone that got a chance to arrive for themselves today. It is a special time. As you know, this is, this is YouTube. So I try to do the best when I get into this space to give every single thing that I've learned in a distillation up until this point, anytime I have an opportunity to deliver for this audience. These are incredible times. There's a lot of stuff going on. And just as we predicted, it was gonna be very, very instrumental to know more about self during these times. And if you could do that, then you can ride the wave and it would just keep going for you. And you would be able to have a nice strong current to conduct yourself through infinity. Now today, we're jumping in here on something deep. It's the beginning of a segment that I've been wanting to jump in on, uh, which is spiritual technology. And I will say for the record that there's lots of stuff that I can jump into when I get on these lines and I do my best. And I have been focusing a lot on metaphysics, linguistics, and those kind of things. And especially since there's this somewhat of a disdain towards technology, uh, especially from the spiritual community, even though that's really predominantly the, the means in which we're using to communicate with each other. I say, well, you know, let's not agitate anybody. Let's just, you know, go with something that is equally as instrumental. But now, since I really don't like repeating myself and we've covered the full gamut of spiritual activation and metaphysical wonders, especially inside of sovereignty mentorship, I decided that I'd come in with this next segment and really bring this into maybe a language that others speak because this is 2021. Uh, there's many that are actually looking for human analytics now, like how can I really, you know, get sensors on my body? And of course, you can do that deep inside internally, spiritually, et cetera. But just like with English, you see how English as a language swept the world and it, then it became a prerequisite. If you didn't speak English, then that even meant maybe a few less dollars an hour 
or, or a few more dollars an hour on your paycheck or your war for time. So it just means that there are governing languages that come through. And as you'll see today with the advent of a new matrix, which is kind of defined in, to everyone in their mind by a movie, uh, to, because there's a new matrix in mind, there's a new language inside of that matrix. And that language is often binary. It often involves electronics. It Im often involves computers, et cetera. And so since anything that works still bears to uh, bears an exact re resemblance to the original template, anything that works bears resemblance to a, the exact template. So a car, because you can get out there and you could turn it on and it works and it starts rolling. There's everything inside of that car that really a universe consists of. There's a, there's a, a generator, there's a voltage regulator, there are wheels, there's an alternator, there's, there's a shell, there's a, all sorts of stuff. There's the, the comfort, all of those different things. They're actually how universe is put together. So any genius that has come through in the past and been able to create another version of the cosmos inside the space and, and been able to do that into the point that it works has indeed been celebrated here and has bought something into this space that actually can benefit for years and years, if not aeons to come, right? Because we're still riding around in cars. And while the car did get an upgrade though, because we're not riding around in Model Ts anymore, it seems like what we're using to ride around in from a spiritual level, which is like our religions and our belief systems, our spiritual structures, haven't necessarily received that same upgrade that the Bugatti got. So what this means is, is that we have to be in ourselves very astute in making sure that our spiritual growth matches the growth of everything else in in this matrix. We'll call it that today. Everything else around us in our spectrum, because that gives us the ability to test our adaptability and having the right adaptability in these times and in these spaces, having the right wisdom, also knowing what what's going on in the frequencies and what's going on uh, with things happening around you. It actually makes your journey quite pleasant. It shifts from becoming a fear based, pain based uh, projection. And then it goes right into you knowing what to expect and knowing what you need to do to get the results that you're looking for, knowing how your energetic system works and what it takes to actually complete a full blown manifestation. So this is perfect. I want to give a moment in time here uh, to just make sure that everything is going good on the YouTube broadcasting side. It seems like things are happening well. Um, if someone just types in there and says, great, then, you know, we can get started with this. I kind of launched right in. And I should have um, <laughs> said, hey, is it working? And why that's happening, why somebody's typing that to me, I will um, let everyone know that, you know, the, the disclaimer here today, what is the disclaimer? Because I, I thought about this as I was coming in right now. And I, of course, been working on this for about 48 hours. So it didn't really come across my mind what should be done in the beginning until the end for me. So I'm like, OK, should there be any disclaimers around this? And I would love to say, well, if you've been watching this channel, it's been up for years. It's 11 years, I believe, this channel has been here then you know how this works. You know, there's an advanced level of, of growth happening here. And what I'm doing is I'm just articulating to you the experience that I'm also going through. And it's been a continuous climb, but lots of benefit and strength in that climb in this space. And because of that, I kind of come in and I'm like, everybody that's here has been with us since the beginning. And of course, that's not the case, right? We know that there's some folks that the algorithm recommended this and now here they are. And so I will say if you don't have a background at all in metaphysics and you don't know about this content and these materials that I'm talking about, stick with it because it's like a new language at first. You don't really understand what's being said, but because intuitively you speak this language also, it will start really becoming comprehensible to you. And But I will say that if you're just coming here for lots of power and to make everybody love you and care for you, this will be instrumental for you because it'll let you see how everything goes on within and that's where you need to get that together first. However, I will say that what we have a tendency to do is when we hear about things that will contain some power, we kind of over consume that power right away. So many of the tools that I'm going to be speaking on today, it's for you to integrate into your life in a, moder a moderate way. It's for you not to just go to people and now and say, this is the way. <laughs> and now if you don't do this, then you're wrong. Seven Bomar says this, 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 because once again, you're, you're just doing that same algorithm that is the nemesis of most beings existence. And that's going out, trying to just elicit external stimulus to confirm what you are internally. 
And, and that's an extra step for you because you should already know who you are. So you would be able to skip that process and actually go on to the next phase and next frequency. Now, that's going to make sense. So I'm giving you this disclaimer, though, that, hey, you know, remember, we're talking about things that are going to change the brain, <laughs> going to change how your entire system functions. And I trust that you can get that done in balance. I always weigh, hmm, should I just not talk about that at all? Are there are there other things? Can we talk about diet and, you know, all that kind of stuff? And I'll weigh it. And then I'll also say at times, because I'm still fresh in my consciousness and fresh of when I just started this, they need that grade A. They're going to need that extra awareness and push and, and vigor in all of this. And rather than anything else, like if I'm going to water it down, it, it may not do us full work. It's 2021. Let's just bring it. So I'm more in that state of consciousness right now. I'm not like, hey, you know, this could be potent. It could be a bit dangerous. You know, they could come offline because we've seen beings come offline. Now we have hints of especially others in the conscious community going through their experiences. And then they just every everybody's the enemy all of a sudden. And then they flip back around and then now everything's OK, except for they just don't apologize for what they've done. They left, you know, a, a, a huge trail of karmic ways behind them. So we see that with power, while something could have the ability to do magnificent things for someone equally, it could have that same potential to do something to de destructive. And that's how the world is created. It's created in these polarities that allows us to get familiar with just that process. And also through experience, hopefully, if we're learning, we learn how to create perfect formulas. Chemistry, which your body is doing all the time, the chem is doing chemistry all the time, is a series of mixtures and formulas of elements and essences that the power and the potential of them are sometimes untold. Even when we've distilled some of the elements that are in this reality, the potency of those elements and what it's driven the human being even to physically do is incredible. And we've barely scratched the surface about synthesis and, and distillation of the elements that are actually within this space. But all I'm saying, though, is, is that before you would even attempt to take off, attempt to apply something potent to your consciousness, it's better to, since you're on ground zero, maybe, to look at the launch pad. Look at yourself. Are you in a, a mood of desperation? They also say that occultism is horrible for one who uh, needs money <laughs> or one who needs sex. They say for those two beings, occultism is horrible for them because only thing they'll do is they'll, they'll look at occultism as a way to achieve those things. And because those things are external, it's already a bad journey. So we have a lot of that going on. So we know that pow the power of things, when released externally, create an explosion. But that same power, when released internally and in tone, creates an implosion. And an implosion, because you're doing it in your own space, it has ability to be contained if you understand how to construct your temple. So your temp pimple has all of these ventricles. It has a full on, let's say, if you wanted to call it a, um, a grid, electrical grid system that is completely connected, has fibers running through all over the place. Like So this temple and how it's maintained is really governing what you're capable of doing and how you're capable of going into other spaces. Just a quick mention of that, the UFO which is clearly the shape that the body goes into when it, when it, when the consciousness, the vehicle, what, what, the shape that it goes into when it leaves the body in one of those states, it looks like a, a, a UFO to many people, like a disc, right? And there's just something revealed about that rather than going into UFOlogy, the external one with aliens on the ship and all of that. It's really about what did they say about it? They said that in this unidentified, which means most of the beings wouldn't know that it's even there or that it exists. When you get inside of it, there's no control panel. There's no GUI. There's no buttons. All there is, is the, they said the mind, whatever's flying is the mind of that being must be how it's controlled. So because we know this is a reference towards this body, this, these vehicles that we have, we know that our consciousness has to be in a certain state for us to be able to control certain vehicles. Now, you have several vehicles. That's what's so interesting about this. You got more vehicles in the garage than Mayweather right now, but they're parked. Their vehicles, if you notice, they have low, they have very low mileage. It's kind of like that classic or that, that beauty that you have that, you know, you're like, man, if we're going to drive this one, we're going to drive this one on a special day. 
And but there it needs to maintenance though. Because so if you try to go and drive it on that special day and you try to start it up, it, it may not start up. So this is what life is like. If we need one of these vehicles or vessels that we have within us at a certain point, but we haven't maintained it and super tuned it and took it around the corner and changed out the gas, then it may not function to, to uh, as properly or to what we remember it functioning like just due to the lack of maintenance. So today, this is about metaphysical maintenance. It is about being able to go into the brain and into the consciousness and actually Correct the harmonization points. It's like just tuning. So if you have an instrument, it could be an amazing instrument. It could be a harp. But if it's out of tune, it's, it's not going to sound right. It's not going to play right. And so this is the ability for you to go into your harp and begin to tune the strings. And speaking of these strings, we've always talked about how personally I like to have a blueprint. I know the map is not the terrain itself. Just because I have a map, when I get there on the astral plane or whatever, it doesn't mean that a map is going to prepare me for what I'm going to experience. But it's great to have a map because I may set off on a journey and already set off in the wrong way. So there are many maps in humanity. Like for a countless period of time, we've been writing maps on everything. And because that's, that's to us the unbroken chain. And because of that, when we... When we know that and we're aware that an adept just goes and looks for a blueprint, they don't go off and try to reinvent something. Now, adept is not a neophyte. Adept is not an initiate. <laughs> Those are previous stages and in initiate. You, even neophyte is going to go and try to create it all themselves. They're going to be completely rebellious. It's the rebellious spirit. Right. But the adept knows that there's a bunch of blueprints already and is going to search for the most proficient blueprint. So I do that. I actually look for blueprints because the truth is across the board, period. No matter what planet you go to, the truths will prevail, even if you don't see them. So I look for these blueprints and truths. So that way, when I leave here, and we all will, that I will have a really good nautical system to be able to guide myself to where I want to go. Now, the interesting thing is, is that good and bad is not a great joystick for navigating where you're going. Good and bad is not a good joystick. Good and bad won't create the type of directions that you would need to go in order to navigate something that is sitting in even an orb. Look at when a plane is being flown. You don't see just one of those north, south, east, west. You see an entire ball to navigate exactly how to get around that space. And so right off, we learned that the deepest lesson that we really can have here is about the difference between a connected field or a unity field, a field that is self-aware. This means that everything in that field is aware that everything is unified versus a non-aware field that is still unified. See, unity is not a choice. This is why the good and bad thing don't make for a great joystick because we try to pin good against bad. This is, we try to pin the winner against the loser. But in its truest extent, the winner, from what you perceive as being the winner, the one that always triumphs or the one who wins, et cetera, is all about continuing, all about coming together, all about growing, all about expanding. Because and how you know this is, is if it wasn't and at one point it ever lost since time is relevant, we wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> so good is not an opposite to bad. Good is an opportunity to get on the winning team. Now, when you realize that, you realize also then, because some's like, oh, okay, so are we talking about Catholicism good? And I'm supposed to be like that to be on the winning team? No, I'm saying throw it all out <laughs> and get some real bearing about yourself to determine how to move from this binary, which is the matrix, this binary good, bad state into a far more gamma range or a unified field. Now we're going to start looking into very deeply how technology actually comes from spirituality. It's a direct plagiarization, if you may. Plagiarization means that there was a, a, it was a direct replica off of something original. We have the Ethernet, right? We know this now as the astral plane. It, it's a space where everybody is connected. Now remember, everybody's connected already, but it's a space where the awareness of that 
is more clear. And just with that knowledge alone, you can already calibrate that lesser spaces just equal smaller crevices where everything there thinks that it's not connected to everything else. I'm going to put this together again. Listen, if you know that as things progress further in the direction of the unity, everything becomes self-aware. So it's already then in reverse engineering known the other direction, things are more, they're less aware of their connection. <laughs> so when you come to earth, you can imagine what frequencies are really on earth because there's a lot of things here that are not aware of the connection. Now the connection always exists. If the connection was ever severed, all of it would turn off. You would never know what happened. <laughs> it would be over, period. And because that is not the case, it has never happened because there is no such thing as time. So you're in this infinite process. So this is why it's imperative to demystify things like death, to demystify things like pain, to demystify many of the illusions or basically things that are created from light that exist in this realm and learn how to even modulate how much of those stimuluses that you're even bringing into your consciousness. Now, some use pain to validate their existence, believe it or not. It may blow your mind. What? Some people use horror even to validate their existence. What? Some can want to go down and eat this gratifying cheeseburger and know this thing is, is death to the body at times, but they will go and get it. What? So these, so it's, it's basically, it's, it's all relative. While one person is trying to say another person is doing things at a certain level and it's completely atrocious, they may not actually see what they're doing that is even more atrocious. But who's measuring? Because what happens is if you get too caught up in externally trying to measure yourself with other people and other people don't even know how to measure themselves, what do you end up with? Disarray. So... Anytime, the reason why today we're lensing through technology is because if I'm aware then, well, cameras are the eyeballs, right? That's the plagiarization of the eyeball. Uh, the four elements even that we've learned in spirituality, fire, earth, wind, water, the archangels, as they call them, when it finally gets totally corrupted, the knowledge and awareness of it is actually the periodic table. I look at the periodic table. Now I see all the fire, the earth, the wind, the water. I see how now it's been broken down even further into layman's terms. And if that's still not making sense to you, I mean, when it's broken down and however many elements are now on the periodic table because they keep adding them, and it's not making sense to you, that's still about the awareness that we would have on a spiritual level of that energy inside of us. That's why this is a universe. This is a university then. And the goal is, is for you to learn about this stuff because this is what your parents put you in front of as a gift to explain to you your tuition is to gain you this high ideal of awareness of what being even is. And then there's more courses after that. So cheer up, have fun on the journey, make it fun for yourself. So in that, we see this need for a map. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on this journey. <laughs> Tell my elder, okay, I'm going on the journey and I'm leaving now. I need, let me get some maps. Can I get some maps? And so using technology as a map, what it's like when a person comes into disarray is when you see a bunch of open wires and you see them all stacked on top of each other and you see them staticking and popping. Now, whatever they're supposed to power is definitely not working. And for us to even get that powered up to see what the condition of that is, we actually need to go and work with the circuitry first. Now, this is where even the term motherboard comes from. Hint, hint. And of course, the motherboard is the, the main module. It's earth. It's what we're on, right? And then the circuits that are inside of the board are very similar to the stars. They're the conductive touching points that create the conductivity into the, the, create the conductivity inside of the grid, right? So right away then, I would then learn... So give me one quick second here, one second. <laughs> okay, we're going to keep going with this. I just realized I had, I had a picture. I'm like, what, what, what was supposed to come right here? A picture. Okay. So when, I, okay, so what I'm talking about here is that, so now think about the circuitry, right? 
and now I'm going to, I'm going to crack one code in, in the linguistics, in linguistics. And that code is the, the matrix, right? Just a matrix. Okay. What is a matrix? Because again, as I said, it's not the movie that Keanu Reeves is starring in. However, when that becomes the overriding for most people's consciousness, they automatically uh, associate the matrix itself to actually that pattern that you now see when you type in matrix pattern inside of Google. You get the matrix code, right, which is numbers. Actually, it's a different language, but it's, it's, it's dripping down. And sometimes it's zeros and ones. It depends on which one you download. But it's saying, okay, there, there's this code and it's green and it feels really computer-like. And that's really what people think of the matrix is now. So when we talk about the matrix, then from there, people think, oh, the fake matrix. And they start basically beefing with the matrix. They think that we're talking about the one on the movie that, Dr. that, that there's Smith and all of them in. When really all that is a, is a distortion. The real matrix that's being referred to is actually the matrix or the mistress, okay? Because these are all the same words. So let's take a look at that really briefly here. And here we go. So this is a matrix, okay? Now, math is my at, okay? We already cracked that code. And we know that my at is what in Kemet was the highest form of spiritual study, period. It was exact. Weights and measures was used. That's why they show you there's a scale. It was exact. So it's saying that there's this exact laws and even on a weight in a scale level, they're perfect. Do you know those laws? Because all other laws, according to what our ancestors were saying, everything else is just a derivative of that. And sometimes it's even when it's plagiarized, it's distorted to give power to whoever the plagiarizer is. So we have an archetype known as the Yaudabeo archetype. And this archetype basically steals knowledge that doesn't belong to it as if it is it, it that it belongs to it. <laughs> and then it goes forward to everyone like it's their knowledge when it really came from somewhere else. And also, more importantly, it belongs to all of us. So that's why it, I, I always come in here and I have to explain to everyone, listen, this is, belongs to all of us. This doesn't belong specifically to someone. What I did is, is I spent my time and my life researching this because I wanted to know what happens when you die. It is the inevitable. Anything else would become just useless trying to figure out. You can make all of the money in the world and then die without it. <laughs> that is not appealing to a being like me. I'm like, man, I, I need to figure out what happens when you die. So it took years and a lot of intentions, a lot of earnest endeavors to actually come into that awareness. And a part of those earnest endeavors was being able to come into this space and give that knowledge freely. We have sovereignty mentorship. Yes, there's lots of gems there, but we also have understanding the channel, which is 10 years deep of knowledge. And it's all there, just like today, it's all here. So our goal has always been to empower the being. And as long as we stay with that, we stay with truth, okay? Like truth is a template, it's an algorithm. It means when you're doing something to further the continuum and in the infinite existence of everything, you've reached truth because everything will always infinitely exist. These are higher truths. And the, the thing how this is going to play out now is that even things that are happening right now to us, our children are going to be 100 years and their children are going to be a few hundred years in the future still dealing with the beings that all of that stuff started happening with. It's just our children will be much more advanced at how to harmonize between each other. And that will create a unison in the, in the external frequencies. But until then, things are only united inside. There's a universal law. There's a universal awareness that belong to all of us. Yes, it is in many secret societies, but even many of them do not know it anymore. They can't turn it on. It's just that it's that same mystery they give about the gray, about how it has this power. They can't use these powers and it, it, it turned off its chakras and all blah, 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 blah. They're just saying that it's not useful to them. They're feeding on fear and horror. They want everyone else to do that same thing. They create devils. They create all these different things in the mind because all is the mind. People want to argue about that. Well, no, brother, the spirit, blah, blah. Those are vehicles for other spaces. Here, all is the mind. 
And the mind in, in men is actually a feminine component, not a male component, right? So when we look at this, what we're seeing is top left. We're going to start on the top left. This is a cymatic that was expor exported from our cymatic software. Now, still to this day, we are the only ones that actually have gone into creating an actual software where people can put in a number and see the pattern of that number. So there's no research, public research or tools in this field that we're going to be talking about today. It's study in the inner sanctums for sure. And it's also studying in things like electronics because you need metamaterials, you need antenna magic, you need brainwave handshakes or, uh, or brain, uh, uh, computer brain handshakes. You need different things like Neuralink. So you need to know this stuff, but this is not stuff that's just in your, 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 your published paper, even at MIT, even at Yale. So when it comes to teaching the highest levels of knowledge, that's just not where they're at. And they're not also doing it in a way that's applicable for people in 2021. Yo, give me the lowdown on what exactly is going on. This is a matrix. Now, this on the left side, as we talk about in the top corner, is a number. OK, it's a number. We put a number in, we hit enter and this pattern comes up on that number. Now, you'll notice with octaves, you'll start seeing the same patterns appear. There's a language of basically about nine to 12 different shapes and all other shapes as you go up. The frequencies are created from that. Now, what does that tell you? What that tells you is, is that there, there's only really a certain amount of templates here. And then what other things really are, are just those templates either mixed in different formulas or appearing larger or smaller than the current space or frequency that you're in. And then when that happens to you, you may not recognize it as you're trying to gain perspective of what you're looking at, right? So on the top left, that is a number. So now this next to it, because you may say, well, what's, this next picture is not beautiful. What is it? It's called a matrix <laughs> or matrix. It is the same concept. And the concept here is just like embroidering, wherever sound intersects, which is called the horizontal and the vertical waters by our ancestors, there is life. Okay? So if you notice, let me just pull this down really quickly here. So if you see on the right side, that's inside of a torus field. Okay? And inside of the torus field, you notice how there are these little points. So true enough, a lot of this, there's really nothing even though nothing is something. But in a lot of this, there's really nothing. But in those points, there is something because something is created when two opposing forces interact with each other or when we collide. And when we collide, the essence that comes off of us becomes the sediment to the spaces that other beings are now existing on. Let me rewind. So Earth as we know it, which is in the mind, is basically an accumulation. All of what we're standing on is an accumulation. Dust, as is the, is a mystical word, dust is an accumulation. It's what comes off of things when it collides with another particle. And it may be so small, you never see it. But once that smallness starts to accumulate, it becomes big. And then it becomes the rock or the stone or the bone. Okay? Stone and bones. Et etymology tells you the framework is an accumulation. Calcium is an accumulation. Pyramids were coated with calcium. It's accumulation. It's all symbolic. So accumulation basically is, is that when those horizontal and vertical waters meet, that's where life is found. Okay? So this means that over at NASA, if they ever wanted to find life, which they've definitely done already, all they have to do is map the vector on the torsion field that you see my picture over and know what the next space over is, where the crossing point is, and you're guaranteed to go there and find life because that's how life is created. And every time those points collide, they create an orb, right? So that flat earth thing, it's still a psyop. I'm going to bang on y'all every time. If you don't know basic geometry, you will believe in something like that. But truthfully, when energy collides, it creates an orb. The orb is its mold. It actually has to do with phi. We create orbs or circles because math or mathematics makes it that way. All of the entire field inside of this mind where the wind, which is your thoughts, where you don't know where it comes and it goes, 
This is the mechanics of how a matrix actually works or a matrix. Now, a matrix, she has lattice. Lattice is like lace. If you look at lace, lace is lattice work. Okay, what is this? Like embroidery. As you see my other picture here, a magic carpet, right? The embroidery of horizontal and vertical stitching of different colors, different spectrums, different frequencies. When I need, when I need a, a distorted color, I go and get a dummy to crash dummy and explode against something and bring back that distorted octave and paint with that. You see what I mean? When I need a perfect harmonically hue color, I go into the what's closest to the unified field and I take that color and I paint with that. See, what's happening here in existence is everyone's given this opportunity to paint, but everyone else is trying to look over their shoulder and tell them how ugly their picture is or whether they like it or not. And that means also two things are going on. One, the person's not painting themselves. And two, they're disturbing the being that is painting. So I reckon, even though there's a lot of things that we're learning from this space, that it's very clear to me also that it seems that we created this space as somewhat of a challenge. Where actually, until we get into alignment and learn the universal law, we at times become the challenge for each other. Arguing, fighting, all the things that create the distortion of going external to not be able to weave your own internal magical carpet, which is your vehicle where you would be able to fly anywhere. So while the finite seems so appealing, it's like a hotel room that's cheap with the light on, the infinite is far more appealing because it doesn't have the drawback of an end, of fear, and even pain when you understand what's going on with your consciousness. So let's keep going. So now we've identified then that this matrix then is the matrix. And even the two wings on my at is a torus field. It's the same thing in the picture above it. But to fools, this is nothing. On the bottom of the left, that is a matrix. That is the numerical expression of a code that creates a grid. We can type that in a computer and it will actually create a pattern or a grid. So some miss that jump. They're like, well, wait a minute, that's technology though. Here we go with the fake thing. No, technology is a plagiarization. There is nothing new in this mind yet. See, when you begin to think beyond the mind, that's called thinking beyond the box. We've talked about this before in the universal blueprint. So the, the box is the containment. It's where fire, earth, wind, water must be contained. Like your body, your body is the box. Five, fire, earth, wind, water must be contained. It's, it's a vessel to hold the power or else your power was just drift off into something else. So now you're starting to see the, the, the purpose of having different frequencies then. Because if everything's just the same frequency, it just all melds in together and it doesn't become aware. It doesn't have a name. It doesn't have anything. There is a space like that. We call it the unmovable. Here, if it could be named, which it means it, if it could be numbered, it could be controlled. Most, most importantly, it can be controlled through oneself. See, sometimes we think control, that's what they're doing. They're trying to control the entire reality and we're going outside again. When really what this knowledge is about is saying, hey, because you're fire, earth, wind, water, actually all the elements on the periodic table, if you learn how to tune into them inside of you, you can pull that string inside of you and it will create external phenomena. Get to work. You got a whole periodic table of elements in front of you. Before for our ancestors, there was just four. We've complicated things a bit more. Now we have to climb the ladder back up. This is the dinonucleic ladder of all of these different elements and how they feel, not just what they mean to the brain. And that's why I do have something to present, but I do have to give you the, the complete thing on this. Nothing must be incomplete here with this kind of awareness. So it's about bringing your consciousness into synchronization or else what's going to happen is you're going to constantly get disarray. You're going to get collisions going on in your own circuitry. You're going to get meltdowns, <laughs> right? And, and you're going to get others melting down around you by proxy. Meaning if you have still things that are mimicking a meltdown inside of you, or you're still believing in fears and, and torture and you're, you're, none of this has happened right now, but you're thinking about it. So it is happening really. You are there really. 
And you'll notice that in the dream. So unless you get control, then the fears control you. So this is the result of letting go of the stick. And as I said, that in life, if we do not guide ourselves, there are guides. But remember, guides can only tell you something. It's like, yo, turn left. <laughs> They're not trying to go over there, grab the wheel, turn left for you. That's not how it works because that guide needs to also be turning left. So do you see how this works? It, it works in unison. It's like synchronized dancing and synchronized in the pool, whatever they call it, right? It's more like that. That's gamma. That's us working together inside of ourselves. If you're trying to accomplish that externally and get everyone to believe this, so we kumbaya, right? And then what? <laughs> After a week and then what? You need to be able to do that in an infinite space so you can figure out and then what? Because all that is in there is, and then what? And then you start learning how to speak that language through yourself. And then you're, you're truly communicating. This, <laughs> to not sugarcoat it, this is pretty much demonic in its terms. This right here, this is a confliction zone. It's a lesson. It's a sim. And it will run over and over for the beings that keep needing to learn this lesson that, yo, the more you split up, the more you fight, the more you even have that going on in your life, the further you're getting away from the unified field and you're going to go deeper in the fields and every time deep, deeper into those fields. And every time you get down into one of those octaves, the door is going to close. What am I talking about? Just like I said, the frequencies don't connect together. Anybody who knows a piano knows if you slide your finger down the scale, it works. But if you tap a white key and then a black key up top, it doesn't work. These are the laws and principles. Somebody said, well, you know, I don't know what you're saying. I don't believe this is music. If I'm playing this to you, it feels right. If I'm not playing it right, something's off. You call that your intuition. <laughs> but when we're working with vibratory fields and frequencies and we become sensitive enough to feel these frequencies, which is empathy, compassion, the compass, now, these are the things that actually are needed to really guide the UFO. Now, it is not an unidentified, it's an identified flying object now. As Dan Winter used to call it, he said, a tornado that is conscious. <laughs> and today, I'm going to let you realize where that, con where that concept comes from of a tornado vividly. Okay, so watch this. We're going to keep going. So now we know that, okay, mistress, okay, so matrix, matrix, lattice, lace. Okay, we get that. Mistress, mattress, or maatress. We lay on top of it. <laughs> okay, all the same word. Any the etymology that I be seeing these days is wild. Like I'm like, yo, I just don't have time for that. I'm over here. You know, we gotta create like there's stuff happening. The whole thing, AI, the crypto, the 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 new spiritual level of awareness. All those things are going on. You kind of find yourself wanting to go back. Like, yo, I need to just etymology one on one. What are you doing with those words? You're taking those swords and you're turning them against you if you don't know how to take words and put just put them in their right places. They're a house of cards, just needing to be in their right places. Learning how to use the swords properly allowed you to be able to figure out through this matrix or lattice work how to cut between or make incisions within realm to get into the other space. We can do it with our mind. It's called raising Lazarus, right? Raising the laser. The laser, which is the third eye, they tell you the laser, the third eye is a laser beam, right? We beam it right into a whole nother space or frequency, and then we shoot ourselves through it. That's how it works. I can't give you an instruction manual and tell you who put it together, but I can tell you that's how it works. It's right now to raise Lazarus, Jesus Christ raised Lazarus. Christ Kundalini, not baby Jesus and, and, and Caucasian Jesus. Christ Kundalini, not physical Krishna, blue black Krishna. Christ Kundalini is raising this thing up and turning on laser. And then laser makes a incision Actually, they say this thing, is, uh, they call it the Shamir, that it doesn't cut as we know it. It goes in, is so small, it, it goes through the holes, right? Because notice how, as we've seen in these pictures, let's just put it up here real quick, that we have these holes 
in the lattice work. We talked about, let's say the one that I'm, I'm over the top, let me move myself out of the way right here. Actually, let me put myself on the confusing mathematic equations. There we go. So you see that? So there's, there's a hole right there in the horizontal and the vertical. This is the same way light starts from the masculine and the feminine. You beam with laser into that hole using the energetic potential that you're storing within the coil of your DNA. So if your DNA chain is crumbling, it's hard to make leaps, right? Quantum leaps. So instead of leaps, you start sliding. This is like going down a ladder. Now, where does a person slide into? You know, I'm just, you know, master knowledge. We got to keep going with it. So this is the Taurus. We know that even the constellation of Taurus is saying beings come from there. Where would beings be sliding into? Okay, here's the next image. We start off with our first frequency, delta. Delta is between the age of zero and two years old. Now, any metaphysician can look at this and kind of start taking it from there, right? Some are saying, well, delta is a Greek word. Everything the Greeks knew. They got from the Kemetans. Them woolly head Greeks, not the ones that you see right now eating falafels. I'm talking about the woolly head Greeks that look like they're basically from Nubia or Herbesha. Notice how the Greeks in that Greek eyes that be looking a little sleepy, right? And then you look at Herbesha's eyes and she looks a little sleepy and you're wondering, something going on here? It went on in the Delta. This is the Delta region. You know this as Kemet. And it's very clear that this is a vagina, <laughs> And to be in Delta as a frequency even, which the Greeks was still zoo crypting and zoo morphing on their own side, basically means that you're actually still inside the womb, zero to two years old, where you do most of the building. The great builder starts in Delta, right? This is akin to a person who is asleep with their eyes open. Even two years old, all the way up to two years old, one year old, eight months old, the baby be asleep right there with the eyes open in Delta. Where's Delta? The underworld. As my brother Finn was talking about the other day, man, y'all can't be afraid at times to be able to head to the underworld because if you didn't build properly and you didn't get your foundation straight, literally, and then you build all the way up 10, 15 years old, 20 years old, 25 years old and then the weight of life starts crumbling the bottom temple because there wasn't enough work there. Now you got to go back to the underworld and nobody likes to go to the underworld. Going in the underworld is literally like diving in a cesspool <laughs> and you got to swim down. <laughs> so it's not just treading across the water. You got to go down in there. And how do you know that? Because the foundation to life is fertilizer. Plants grow from fertilizer, dead things. Plants eat meat. Vegetarian's like, no, no, no. Yes, dead bugs and all sorts of stuff is on that floor. Cicadas make up 30%, 40% of what the minerals trees are eating, right? So all of that is shells, uh, scorpions, uh, uh, what, what did it say, uh, 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 frogs. Um, what are those things, those uh, centipedes, right? You can sometimes even see those in the dream. You're like, yo, we're definitely in the underworld. Are we out of here yet? Give me a lozenge. Let's spray some of this Febreze all over the place. It's Febreze. <laughs> but it means you got to go in there and actually restabilize those pillars, right? So the baby is your calling in, but the baby, as we demystify, listen, the baby is not innocent. If innocence is that you don't know anything, the baby knows everything. If the innocence is that it's your first time and, 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 and you've never been here before, the baby has been here and a few other places before. If, if, if innocence is, you see what I mean? So the baby or how we're writing off the baby, we're just saying the baby means that it can't do, it, the hands are not strong and it can't run. And if somebody tries to throw it, it can't stop that person. So we're just saying it's new here and not acclimated to this space and now needs to grow into the frequencies and how this space is created and put together and then gain the opposing appendages. But to go as far as assuming that that thing never seen life before is ridiculous. 
because those kind of thoughts then lead to a lot of other things when that that same baby has already come out of quite a few lives from the DNA that has been borrowing from its ancestors and it's holding a chain code where blockchain is coming from, right? It's a plagiarization of the DNA. It's holding in that chain code everything that's been done. And then you're going to inherit through heredity, same word, what is going on with that DNA chain. So this is why it's important to have avatars come back through, especially in your family and clean up that DNA chain. Like really, really take it into account that it's somebody's responsibility to actually flush this thing and actually get the, the, the advanced awareness clicking again and then to get it completely restored as the system will remove itself from debt, right? So as we keep going with this, this zero to two years of age, we find that this delta is being built. And we've seen the imagery now showing us that there may be, in fact, yet another map or yet another template inside of a linguistic system now called today Greek. OK, and that some of the symbolism is seeming to be directly akin to actual frequency ranges because the delta frequency range inside of the mind is that of a child that is zero to two years old or still in the womb. So this would also hint that it's possible that then we have a progressive growth just through frequencies, proving why this could all and is all the mind. Because the mind is a huge frequency set. It knows how to manipulate frequencies, mix up in frequencies in different formulas. It knows about all this stuff. Now, whether it's telling you or not determine, is determined whether you've made a connection. Because when I say all is the mind, right? Some look at that one way, like, are you just saying that all, you know, my, my everything is just the mind and mental structure? And you're thinking that from your limitation. I'm telling you all is the mind that what you're calling all in this space, the thing that's running everything is the mind. And you, if you want to give it that name, then now you're in what's in all of the minds because it's a template, it's frequencies. So then when you want to communicate with the all, you do it through your mind or all of what you perceive. <laughs> and then because you're defining what all is. So then when you find it inside of your mind and you communicate with it, you control it in the physical reality because the physical reality is subservient to the mind. OK, just as anything that is more distilled is a higher quality of what is in its denser form. Right. So let's keep going because we've talked about nothing that hasn't been proven already. So now because the eyes account for 80 percent of the sensory system. So when you open your eyes, 80 percent of your battery goes right towards this right away. So your battery goes mm -hmm. and you have only 20% left to operate other things and 80% goes in perception. It's like when you start looking through a drawer and you're trying to find something and there's a bunch of stuff in that drawer, okay? The mind is going through all types of stimulus at that point, distinguishing the scissors from the bark, from the wrapper of candy, from the where it could be to the back corner, to the dust in the back corner, to the few cards that you left to the refrigerator magnet in there. So all of that is all stimulus coming through and the mind's capable of processing all that. No problem. But when you're using this sensory system, because it does still take 70% of the power to operate this, we then learn that when you close these, you divert that 70% of the power back into the internal system. This is now called meditation. <laughs> you see what I mean? So it's to be able to bring the frequency to close off this channel to amplify the frequency that's going on inside so that basically you would be able to hear your own frequency in your own ear. We've talked about this, like get some earplugs, get in a place quiet and just listen. Now, some of our frequencies are so strong, we can actually hear them audibly. <clears throat> some have confused us for tinnitus even at times. There is a condition of tinnitus. But there's another one. <clears throat> that is just a high vibratory being and they can hear this ring. It's just like even sometimes at night it's like it's a little like loud. I'm like, yo, can we turn this down? 
And I'll show you about how to do that here in a moment. But when your energetic potential is high, which can match with certain things that are happening in the constellation. Give me one minute. Let me just clear my throat here. <coughs> it's like one of the rap sessions. Let me clear my throat here. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> That's like when you're going a thousand miles an hour with no water or with no water, your radiator just like. Phew. So, <laughs> so we're talking about basically being able to, 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 to oscillate in your frequency, your frequencies in your consciousness, but there needs to be awareness that you actually have a frequency is what I'm getting at here. Because let me say, well, shoot, I mean, maybe I need to level up a little bit more, or maybe he's talking about something that, you know, I need to eat a bunch of supplements to figure, to, 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 to be able to have. We all have it just like we all dream. It's just whether you're sensitive enough to it. What is a way to train yourself? Tuning forks. If you can't hear any frequency in your ear at all, like if you got, if you put the, the, um, the ear, <laughs> if you put the things in your ear to close your ear canal, right? The earplugs, and then you're listening in a closed environment with no noise and you can't hear anything. It means that that actual thing inside of your ear, the vibratory thing that they made the speaker do, the voice coil, it, it, it needs, it needs a workout. It needs probably to even be healed if you've been listening to loud music a lot. What you do is you take then a tuning fork and you hit that tuning fork and get a 520 hertz tuning fork. You hit that tuning fork, 432 hertz, and you just listen to it until you can't hear it anymore. And you do that again until you can't hear it anymore. And what happens is, is that as you're, you're, you're tuning your mind back into hearing until it stops, your mind starts stretching all the way into to, to reinvigorating that field of frequency and wavelength and your perception to it because it's always making noise. A tuning fork over there in the room right now, even if it's laying on something, is making noise. Sometimes if you get, to get a stethoscope, you put the stethoscope in and you put it over the tuning fork, it's making noise. <laughs> even though nobody has hit it in a few days. And this, of course, is because the whole thing is a vibratory field. And becoming a sensitive allows you to perceive these frequencies and how they're moving around. And since they're the language of life, one is able to really understand what's going on around them. It's not always just predicting the future. It's being able to tap deeper into the present. So we close our eyes and then we go into this meditation. And what I want to do is, is I just want to Go over my notes here really briefly to make sure no point is missed before we get now into the application. Okay, just something to be very clear then. So it's either everything or nothing. <laughs> that sounds like a person that knows what they want. Everything or nothing. So there's a field where everything exists, which is where the one we're in right now. Everything that you can classify as a thing, since we're using words, is here. And then we have a space that's called no thing or nothing. No thing because nothing is identified there. There's no label. There's no frequency. This, even, this is even one click before trying to look up a completely instrumental track on the internet and not having a name for it. Okay, listen to what I'm saying. You hear this symphony playing, right? And you're like, man, I really like that but you don't know the name of it. Can you go to Google and find it? No. You can't say it sounds like this. La da 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 Nobody's going to know about that. So there are spaces like that. And as you're heading further and further into that direction, it's basically the waves stop moving. And then just like slowing down your heart, it gets pretty strange to what can occur in those fields and the effects of what they create in these fields. Because you're getting closer to the unmovable, which is the original name for our, ans our, our great ancestor, like the, the origin point, they called it a word that meant unmovable, meaning it's, there's no wavelength, there's no frequency, so there's no colliding. There's no horizontal, there's no vertical, there's no sound. So there's no name, there's no tone. It's like it's mute. And it is conscious as we know it. 
So more on that. But remember, there's there could be a countless amount of fields before you will reach that space. Some people say, oh, what shoot? Well, I'm going there. Or how do I avoid that? It depends on what kind of person you are. It's like, I want to avoid that. It's there's a myriad of fields before you would even get to something like that if you understand what we're talking about here. So it means that you just need to know the spectrum. That's what we're talking about here. Everything and nothing is what has been laid before you. Now, since we have that, we have basically a measurement tool for ourselves. While as expansive and as big as it is, it's still a measurement tool. We have the known reality where every single thing is divided into all these little pieces, wood, stone, art, chairs, people, good, bad, mad, clean, dirty. Man, we've really done it here in separating things into all these little parts. So it makes sense that the only opposite one has no separation. And the only way for no separation to exist means there can be no frequency because frequency is what separates. Why does it do that? Because right now, Earth's 7.83 hertz, it still oscillates 12, maybe high enough for Earth. If it goes too high or too low, if it, like if it goes into four hertz, we're going to have earthquakes all the time. And it's going to shake down the accumulation. Certain things are not going to be able to grow. No, as soon as you can grow in an earthquake, certain things cannot grow. Same thing with the high pitch frequencies. There are certain things that they can't even they can't even bud. They can't even start life in those fields. The fr frequency is too high. So what this should teach you is, is that, yeah, all these different types of people and the way they act and what they have going on are all different variants of the chemistry. And trying to figure out how to manipulate and change them is a wasted effort. You need to be on yourself and figuring out how you function to calibrate yourself to get where you want to be now that you're aware of all this, now that you know all this functions this way. Now, the reason why we're bringing in a technical component today is because for some, this wisdom is enough. Because all this is the mind anyway, I know how to make the proper adjustments into my consciousness and move, if, if someone explained this to me beforehand, I can load it into my consciousness and go forward from there as I knew it. And I may begin to experience the stimulus of being aware of that and believing that, or excuse me, knowing that. And this is the power of a mentor. I want to make it very clear, the difference between belief and knowing. Belief has to continuously be confirmed. This is a person that looks even to others to confirm what they think they believe in. And then, of course, if there's 100 people there and those are all at least friends or people who they model themselves after, they believe it. But when those people leave, they leave too. And they go try to find another place where there's that many people to confirm what they believe. Knowing is different. Knowing is it could be 9 billion people over there and you're in the knowing and you're good. <laughs> you're not at all looking for these 9 billion people to, co to confirm for you what knowing is because they can't. It's a master law and principle. No one else can confirm for you what knowing is because knowing is a feeling. It has nothing to do with the brain. Right? In addition, People can be so lost because the brain is actually not the mind. Maybe I should have said that earlier. <laughs> the brain is not the mind. This is, the brain is determined now as being the mind because it's like our own personal replica of one, of, of what we're really in. But it's not the mind. Just like I told you, all is the mind. All is, the mind is everything. How do you know? Well, if you make a journey outside the body, I trust maybe in life you'll be free and have the opportunity to, especially as you learn how to oscillate through your frequencies, you'll come out and uh, you'll still be conscious. <laughs> and even your data will be there, meaning like who you are, words you learned, things you knew about, all your data is there and you're looking at the body <laughs> which with the brain in it. <laughs> And this reveals right away that your consciousness is not actually in that body, so it's not actually in that brain. What the brain in the body is, is the replica. It's basically when light, which we're made out of, electromagnetics, goes and steps down a couple frequencies, meaning that it actually goes into a different shape and density. This is what appears, but it is everywhere. So just because it depends, disappears here, a frequency disappears here, 
It's still somewhere. All we have to do is tune right back into it. And when we tune back into it, then it starts to become audible even to us. So a person who knows how to get in and out of different realms is just only knows how to work their knob on their own personal radio station. This is like Shavasana, where you go into Shavasana after the meditation and you slip into Theta, you start being able to hear something that's not necessarily going on directly in the space that you're laying in or see things just like the dream. You start seeing things that's not necessarily going on in the space that the physical body is laying in. So what is that world? That world is an electromagnetic world. So in that world, you're not seeing a chair. You're seeing an electromagnetic chair. You're not seeing seven. You're seeing the electromagnetic seven because your consciousness knows how to generate everything that it sees in an electromagnetic spectrum. Even things that your your own personal mind forgets. <laughs> so you can forget about those little kids that you knew at three or four years old and that y'all was all in preschool, pre preschool together. And you could thought you could never recall that and be in a dream with them. Or you could be regressed and someone can ask you, okay, you're three years old now, who you're sitting next to? I'm sitting next to Juanita, my, my uh, sibling that I knew in preschool. But your conscious mind may not be able to grasp that information. Why? Because it's locked out. There has been a film that has been put up. That's the frequency wavelength. That's what I was explaining earlier. The different when frequencies shift. It's basically something that ensures that existence continues when you know its ultimate, its ultimate purpose. If too many things are in the division zone, but completely aware, it causes a meltdown. It causes conflicts, confusion, turmoil. So when someone levels up, they go to literally another level and then they enjoy the space with the beings that are on that level. That's how we create our peer groups. That's how we created our tribes. That's how we created our family. That's how we used to create even who, what we're, where we're incarnating, what womb we're coming out of, who is going to be our sisters and brothers. We did all of that preparation before in, in the concept, when the conception point hits, there's already been so much preparation by that immortal being. But again, if you have no clue of nautics anymore, because something is tampered with your system or you've tampered with your system or you've been in the debt-based structure, you've corrupted your file, whatever the case may be, your avatar, that's the other one, your avatar, you inserted yourself deep to go recover all the family members and the codes and the antennas that were stranded out in, in the no zone. Whatever your story is, this is the work at hand. It's work at first because it's like climbing a hill. You're literally climbing your spine back to your throne room. Right. So it's work at first. But after you get into the right state. Then you're able to oscillate, you're able to enjoy the land, you're the Lord or God of your own land. But right now, your people are at war. You got invasions from viruses. What are they at times? Just anytime it's too much of something. Right. Everything has a place. But if it starts overrunning the system, you got to be the one that comes in and regulates harmonizes, puts the caudacious down, brings the laws of my act, knows the measurements and the weights because you're that concerned about yourself. See, being in theta is internal. They're concerned about themselves and how they're functioning and what's going on. Let's keep oscillating through these frequencies as we know now that delta is zero to two. So we have the theta frequency, which rolls in next. And this is two to six years old. OK, this is where it becomes interesting. You're literally at the border. Let me show the picture here. This would be the symbol. Okay. So in Theta, apparently based on these symbols and other places that I've seen these symbols. Now, this is the Greek symbol for Theta, okay? But these symbols themselves are actually present in other occult works without necessarily a... Um, a um, it, it's not saying in those works that that's Theta. It's saying it's something else. And it just turns out that the Greeks made that something else the same symbol for theta. And in that knowledge, it's making reference to this middle zone, basically. It's talking literally about the layer between one world and the next. 
And it talks about how this, this, this layer is like a jump room. It's like an elevator. And what it's literally stating to, again, confirm that there is some type of code in this Greek language, it's going right to the next frequency. Two to six years old is saying that the consciousness is right at the doorway of coming from the world, bef the, the, uh, the, that world, the other world, if you may, into this one. That frequency, the other frequency, if you may, into this one. That spectrum, that other spectrum, if you may, into this one. They're right in between. OK. Now, this also happens to be the state that you reach when you're also in lucid dreaming. Or as I put here, 3 a.m., you wake up, you got to use the restroom, you go back to sleep. You pulled yourself out of Delta. Right. You've come from the underworld. So especially if you were super tired that night, you partied everything. Now you've gone back to sleep at 3 a.m., but the, 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 the prime mover is about to come around the sun which is a frequency. So it's going to raise you up as long as you're able to actually catch the least the galley way. <laughs> and so what happens 3 a.m., you go use the bathroom, you come back, you fall back asleep and you start sliding back down through the frequency. You may have never even hit alpha, but you were still in theta. And then now you start really remembering the dream and what's going on. Now, a lucid dreamer is in what I believe is uh, low theta, Right. A person who is in dream recog, meaning that you can actually just see your dream, but you won't necessarily remember it completely, but it's like a strong recall that you're there, is in low theta, or excuse me, high theta, right? So now this is the inner world. This is inner world discovery. And two to six years old, the child is mostly relating to themselves and how they see the world, <laughs> Right. And that's why it becomes so imaginative and fanciful. That's how they could get rocks to talk and all this kind of stuff that they have that children have going on when you watch them play. This two to six years old is basically theta and they've just come from Delta. Right. Done all of the work there and now they're coming into theta and it's now time to have some fun. Now they're in this world and they don't even know where they're at. And this is fascinating because as I explained to you before. It looks like the closer that you get to unmovable, the more you become aware of everything. And becoming aware of everything becomes the equivalent kind of a, what we call boring. How do we know that? Because exciting is a rapidly moving wave. <laughs> boring is a wave that doesn't move at all. All knowing can be indeed unmovably boring because you already know what's going to happen. No one can do anything to anyone there. We already know what's going to happen. We know what that person's going to do. No one can create anything new because there's no such thing as new. Nobody can. So you see why we created this space? Why we're trying to get rid of it and leave it and all that kind of stuff? We created the impossible. People trying to throw it away. So indicative of the human species at times. Not realizing all the power that it has in front of itself because it's so busy looking everywhere else. But right now, in this day, in this time, 2021, on university, we all get the opportunity, or understanding channel, we all get the opportunity to refresh ourselves about how this works. And when we're talking about space, <clears throat> and people are thinking space is empty, how to navigate space. And to know that space is filled with frequency. The moment I speak out, all that ripple effect will go all the way to the end of the cosmos. Just because you cannot hear it, it doesn't mean it's not making a sound. If you're sensitive, like an instrument, you can feel it. And even deeper, you can actually interpret it. And that's why I'm saying it's tapping into the feelings then, not the brain. This brain right here, that's why when you get out of the body, it's like, okay, let me just show you how it works. When you get out of the body, it's like, okay, bam, the mind's gone. But then you may see fire and start feeling the heat. Wait a minute, but the body is gone. Is the body what's feeling heat? Shit. <laughs> If the body is there and I'm feeling heat, is it my mind that is telling me that I'm feeling heat? Ta-da. Does that work here? Ah. Training enough there to know that heat is not really hot. Heat's not hot here either. But do be aware, the more you nullify the existence here, it will start even particleizing and not being solid. You'll start drifting in between dreams and you won't know if that was the dream or if that was reality. The more that occurs, you become all knowing. You dream about tomorrow. And I've explained this to people like 
this particular frequency, when you go into the other one that is a bit more advanced and refined, you see this one in the dream. You see everything you're going to do the next day in a shorter period of time, proving that the encryption code is much more stronger. The language is much more stronger. It can decrease what would take you 24 hours and show it all to you in 30 minutes. Then you wake up and you start living it. OK, but that realm comes with responsibilities because when you can see what's going to happen and then you start getting into that craze of trying to prevent it by doing external things, algorithms got you again. See, this system in itself is self-contained. <laughs> it's self-contained. It wasn't designed for beings to get out. It's like that's how the ancestors designed it for beings not to get out. And thus anybody who can get out deserve to be out figured out about the unified system. Any being that can get a little bit further beyond learns about those frequencies and those wavelengths and what it takes to harmonize in those spaces, right? And where are you learning that? A place where all the frequencies are present. All the teachers, delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma are all present. All the master teachers, right? And then there's more frequencies. What are they? Deities. They're numbers. We went through this in karma codes. If you want to know more about the symbol as a number, just enroll in the university that one month, go into karma codes and do your thing after that. From there, you'll know what all of these numbers that you're seeing on your keyboard, what they really mean through deity. How our ancestors taught them the energy that's moving inside of us. You'll see that too looks like a swan for a reason. It is a constellation that's called the swan. It has a certain energy going on. How do you know? They say, well, how do we know when energy comes from the stars? Look below, look on earth. Certain beetles come out of the ground during certain times. Certain plants go into bloom during certain time. Certain smells, certain colors, certain things come out at certain times. And our ancestors, because they didn't have PlayStation and YouTube, spent time figuring and itemizing all of that. Like, yo, did you know? Look what this thing is doing. It's acting weird. Look at it acting weird. What time is it? Did, wasn't it at the same time the other thing started acting weird? Is this the acting weird time? I don't know. Let's make a note of that. Let's go ask one of our elders. Again, having mentors. What mentors are, are instrumental in is taking you from belief to knowing. Why? Because, see, when you have a, a mentor, somebody that you actually really trust, you could be wrestling with things yourself, like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to go on this fast. You know, you could be in that all by yourself. But then let somebody respect you respect tell you, hey, man, go ahead and go on a fast. And you're right there in the fast now. So it's just a point to point reflective tool to be able to allow us because I can't fast for you. <laughs> right. Let's be fast forwarding you. I can't fast for you. <laughs> you have to do it. But if, if you trust me and you know me, you listen to what I say and it means a lot to you and you go do it. Now, if we remove all those people from our lives, no matter if that's me or anyone else, where are we at? Right? Because that's what's happened with, with our ancestors. Now they externalized, they became deities. Now they became corrupted. Now we don't respect them. Now we don't believe in them anymore. And that's the whole process of going outward. But the true tutelage is inside. I speak to beings internally about what they're already knowing and thinking about. <laughs> and it just resonates. And then it confirms. And it's a point to point system a person is using for discernment until they gain ultimate discernment and then they move forward. But if you don't respect me, don't waste your time here because it can't be as instrumental for you because you're still going to narrow it down. A, yeah, but I saw that dude with a booger on his face. Yeah, but they they said he was this and this and this and this. And you're just here. You know, you're you're getting mad and you're I knew it, blah, blah, blah. And you're not in yourself. Right. So we see all this going on a lot and it lets us see the mind field. Right. Oh, man, it's a mind field. Man, is it a mind field? If you step on the wrong trick, boom, boom. And folks, when they blow up, they kill everybody. They're like suicide bombers. They get mad about something and boom. And when you're doing that in a community, in a tribe where we all know each other, it's like, mm, 
That's why there has to always be an arbitration component within the community, especially if it's going to be external. That's why I'm not over here playing around with external folks. Internally, you would still need that same thing. You need to know how to go into your being. And when you're coming into some kind of conflict to diffuse the conflict right away, you're the troubleshooter. <laughs> so you're going to go in there and you're going to diffuse that conflict so you don't lose life force. Because when you start staticking and you go into disarray, you lose more life force and you never get out the expression that you're truly looking to, to really exhibit anyway, right? So this is the energy, this is the frequency system. Finally, we have, well, a couple more here. We have alpha before we get into our application. I guess y'all may have to put this into a two-part series. No, we're gonna get through everything today, but I'm saying you may have to ingest this because some folks are always whining. It's two hours, but I just cannot. But be with the Lakers for two hours. It's like, what are you doing? But be in, in, in a clubhouse for three hours sweating on a conversation with the game. You know what I mean? It just <laughs> Stop. You know what I mean? It, it, it is what it is. You're getting everything in the universe in, in two, three hours. Look at it like that and, and leap for joy and click your heels. So Alpha, 7 to 12 years old, you now have this. So, so we know theta, right? So theta, just so we recap, theta is like, you know, you're in, like you're literally, you're, you're at the doorstep to existence. You still feel the other world because you are fresh off the delta, but you're looking into this other vista and you're starting to be able to feel what's going on and only imagine what you're seeing. Right. And in that point, it is a very sensitive point for a being. You can only imagine if a, a being is getting abused in that stage or punished or whipped or, or neglected or all those kind of things in that stage. But we also know that that stage is for sure a byproduct of the energy and the DNA that that being is formulated from. So that's the work. Instead of trying to blame it on somebody else, you got to see exactly what it is and do your best to toil in the fields to make sure that our youth get some kind of awareness of what is going on in this experience so they can become adepts. Right. Imagine when we're having children coming in the world and we're putting them into the right environments that allow them to continue to thrive and oscillate through their frequencies and perfections rather than seeing the highs of the frequencies, meaning the chaotic sides of the frequency. So as we keep going here, we now see that 7 to 12 is the alpha stage, okay? And this is now the first outer world discovery, okay? This is actually where, excuse me, in the alpha stage, this is where there's a lot of imagination. In the previous stage, again, in theta, there's a lot of internal reflection, I need to make sure that's clarified because I kind of skipped up in my notes and I thought that I had this here, but I wanted to make it very clear. Theta is, is you literally building internally and seeing things internally. Alpha is when you now take that internal and you're bringing it out into the external, okay? This is like you're fresh in this outer world of discovery. There's lots of imagination and you become highly impacted by the stimulus around you. Because you had already formulated what you thought things were about in theta, alpha becomes in itself like an overriding process to what you thought things were about. This is also why many can't control your, their dreams after that point or don't have good dream recall after that point. Because in these impacts, the consciousness is learning the chemical formulations that it's now going to inhabit. So seven to 12 years old, if there's a lot of sadness, the body becomes familiar with how to make the cocktail of sadness. If there's a lot of disapproval, this is the time where children are going through and you know, it's, everything's happening at this stage. They're on the onset of puberty, they go into school, they got friends, that, uh, got, got friends and they got people that don't like them and they're highly impacted and concerned about this. This is a state. I'm talking about this as a child and how children grow through phases because that's very useful but also see this as even frequencies that you os are oscillating through every single day. And see these more as energies and ideals that you actually go through in a process and it shifts you into these frequencies. Let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit here. So we have a lot of internal chemical remixes happening in the alpha state. The being begins to go and, and remains external. Now beta kicks in. Beta is basically 12 years and older. And we're again, this is not one size fits all. Everybody doesn't have this going on. This is approximates. So 12 years and older, this is beta. 
Basically, the being is completely or mostly externalized, like 80 to 90 percent externalized, concerned about the world and what's going on in the world. This is happening. This is also, from what I revealed the other night, the highest populated realm. Let me just shake it off real, real quick here. Oh, I've been in the seat for a minute. This is the highest populated realm. Because what I was explaining before is, well, what I just recently explained is the reason why things are happening and spiritual things are occurring more is because we're finding ourselves, more people are at home and they're actually sleeping more. They're, they're recalling and thinking more. So this means that they're actually entering into the alpha and beta worlds more. When it used to be that there wasn't that many inhabitants, if you may, in those worlds. So because of that, when you, if you go into that space, the theta space is often the dream plane, you may find that space now more crowded. Also remember, when a person quote unquote dies, they still have a frequency and that frequency goes into now another spectrum. So that spectrum will be more crowded. So they saying they got all these COVID deaths? I don't know. <laughs> but I would know if that happened, that means whatever those spaces are, even if they're purgatory, would be more crowded. And if you ever drove by those spaces or tuned through those spaces, there would be more noise. There would be more chatter there. Okay. And then when there's enough, uh, uh, enough of a, um, a spectrum that is actually inhabiting those spaces, it becomes a realm or a world. OK, so this kind of hints then that even the baby is actually living in a world more than likely of the, the ancestors that have passed on because that is that is a world now. So I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to articulate in English to you how we end up in different worlds and what worlds really are to begin with and how worlds are being created now. And when a world is complete, it's very similar to like when a baby is complete. But before a world is complete, it's like you can be in this world as a metaphor and you'll be walking down the street and then all of a sudden the sidewalk will be gone. <laughs> It'll just like not be complete. You'll see oddities in the world that have started going into play. Like there'll be birds, but they don't have wings. <laughs> so it won't be like complete because that's like the beginning process of how a world is. And then when it has enough uh, uh, consciousness to inhabit it, wherever that consciousness passed from, it uses its code, its eminence, to actually feed in to the coding system there to make it static. Then it becomes a lattice work. Then it starts to accumulate particles that are moving through the field. They become stuck. And then it starts to form life again. And this is over and over again. So if you don't know how to grab a delta, a delta theta, alpha, beta gamma joystick <laughs> to move yourself through frequencies through inf infinity it could be a rough ride but the ride's not going to stop and i'm noticing because I, I i love to to look in other parts of the world i don't like to think that i know everything and i've experienced everything and i know that's bullshit so i look in the other parts like there's a lot of like DW documentaries. There's a lot of guys that also they just travel. They go around the world and they turn the camera on. Look, I'm in dangerous. I'm in a dangerous area where the gypsies are. Look. And I'll go there. But because I feel I'm not watching with my eyes because the, the stimulus is wasted there. I can feel what's going on in those spaces. I can feel those people, feel those beings and what they're experiencing. And then it humbles me about life. Because even at this stage, like I know how to operate lots of different machines. I've definitely figured out how finances work and I've been able to help as many people as I can spiritually. So I've gotten a lot into this life and into this experience and created a lot of things. And there's some things that they haven't even began yet or the things that they're doing is clearly the opposite direction. And it's just going on. It's happening. If I got on a plane and landed right there, I will go and find those people to be there. And to me, that Man, that says a lot about experiences and frequencies and wavelengths and how you can live in one world that another person is living in, but see it in an entirely different way. And that that's how everything works. If you take an Inuit over to Disney World, they're going to be seeing that totally different than a Slovakian 
You see what I mean? It's not, they're not going to all experience Disney World the same way. It's going to be based on their culture or their Petri dish and their language and their custom. So this also means that if I have a culture, a language, a Petri dish, and a, and, and a custom that has been given to me, I need to make sure I check that to determine if that's the ideals that I want to actually exist with. And if those are even the original ideals that I did exist with, because I would know that every single thing that I'm doing has been formulated from that. So that's why I say going in the netherworld is when you, you accept, OK, <laughs> all of this stuff that they're talking about, this this uh, this fighting, this conflicting, the, you know, all this stuff that we've been taught and we've been trained. You've learned that. But now you must unlearn that because it's an obsolete program and you operating on it is keeping you in a box of conflicts and confusion, and you don't even understand that that thing that's hitting you and hurting you is your own hands, your own arm, your own energy, and your own mind still stuck in that fear and pain. And it can get very real because fear in itself is a very strong frequency. They show you the fear frequency because they can create it. It's a fear frequency. They can create it in a sound, right? Like on a movie, when they're ready to hit you, it's like a Right. And it, it immediately it takes your energy. Boom, boom. Right. That's high beta. Right. They know. OK, hit him with high beta. High beta is fight or flight. I just saw a snake. I'm not going to negotiate it with it. I'm about to jump. I just stepped on a, a whole pile of ants. I'm not going to sit there and hmm, let me theta. <laughs> let me zen out. Uh, zen. <laughs> you finna get somewhere. That's a lion. I'm running. OK, so that's a frequency and that frequency, the voltage of that frequency is so high. It manifests and it creates an awareness into the physical space a lot more stronger than other frequencies. So this is, again, why where preference comes from. People love the horror movies now. They love to see the crazy news. Somebody get the leg blown off. This is what they need even to get the coffee going in the morning. Right. That's like that frequency that that that's like now the being is trying to live off of a frequency that is that extreme. OK, so let's keep going here. So we then will then have these shifts. Right. So since we talked about the frequencies beyond gamma, except for gamma, we also have to pay mention to the consciousness is not always in one frequency. It's actually oscillating between multiple frequencies like a formula. So when a person has a frequency shift, <clears throat> shifting from beta to alpha is like shifting from being, you know, even if it's high beta, anxiety and, and, and afraid into focus, right? So there's actually a lot of military training about shifting from alpha or excuse me, from beta to alpha. So a bomb hits, boom, right? Whoever shifts into alpha the fastest is probably going to survive if they've survived the initial impact. Shifting the alpha puts you right into the state of being able to focus right into the physical world and what's going on. So that's why these different frequencies are different things for different things. Beta also is great for problem solving. It's that point where everybody's dealing with a problem and then everybody's kind of stressed about that problem. And then it clicks for someone. Someone they get right from beta to low beta in the gamma for a minute. It looks like a check mark, And then they go back into beta. I got the answer. I got it. So do you see each frequency is, is uses? Like I said, going to Delta. Sometimes when a person is super sleepy, super tired, you've worn yourself out. Instead of thinking, oh, I just want to go in lucid dream, you're tired. Your body is tired. Go to the Delta, recharge completely, and then bring that thing back up and try again tomorrow. So you're guiding your journey through frequencies, right? And then finally, gamma, which is the merger. Gamma is literally... Many of the frequencies working in harmony and unison together. As I said, one day, maybe we'll have a gamma world where we at least learn how to do that. That's the point. It's really an orgasmic scenario. It's not just, hey, we all agree through the mind. It's a feeling that, hey, I know we're all connected. I feel you. I know what's going on. And it's not even a conversation. That is gamma. Right. And this consciousness there in gamma, it's like that's a space where you don't it's not a crowded space because few make it to gamma for any prolonged period. High, the highest levels of meditation of the measuring the mind of a Tibetan monk that's been on it for 40, 50 years. They're going into gamma right away after about 20 minutes. 
and gamma is where they're doing all of their all of their whatever they're doing in the unit unified conscious field but completely perceptive of what is going on right and then we know beyond that field is the unmovable right so here we are so i had to say all of that to say this so now we're going to begin with step one of understanding the language of frequency okay why don't we do this I'm going to like ring myself out really quick, you know, because I'm always wanting to stay flexible. I'm going to give about two minutes for us to breathe. You can breathe on your own. Let me see what I have on the screen here. I have a little something that I can put up on the screen and just take some breaths and we're just going to take a moment. And then when we come forward, we're going to go right into the software and right into the equipment that actually allows you to be able to be way more familiar with your frequency and how to actually begin to learn your language and then begin to move around your frequencies inside of your consciousness to speak that language. So we're gonna give this little brief segment in here. Let me see where that golden intonation is at. You're gonna take some breaths and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and go in on this. Let me see, bank three, I think that is, there we go. Okay, there we are. Okay, so yes, yeah, so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna come forward with this next level of the expansion of now how do we move through this right now that we've described the space we've dictated exactly how it functions and how it works we're not in conflict that one person's on one frequency growing and another person's on another frequency growing and that if they happen to sometimes if they're if they're so far apart if one tries to go into the other frequency they won't experience growth they may experience eradication <laughs> like low dense things trying to go into high vibratory frequencies man they they lose their mind literally you got to let go of all sorts of baggage and stuff you got packed up it, it just shreds all of that in those higher frequencies right so there are different frequencies and different spaces for different things and when we become more responsible about the journeys that we're taking within then we can actually begin to manifest exactly what we want without like meaning outside what's going on out here so that's what I got. So let's take a couple breaths and then we're going to go in. Thank you. 
Okay, family, we're going to give it about three more minutes and then we're going to go ahead and go in on this. I'm just refreshing myself to make sure that I'm in optimal condition, especially as we go through this portion of frequency training. Thank you. Okay, family, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to move right into stage one. And so this is about understanding the language of frequency, but not through the mind. <laughs> so what's happening here is, is that we, we sometimes perceive that the mental way of, of uh, interacting with the space that around us is actually what's preferred because we have to go to school. So we go to school, we learn all this mental stuff, and then we start thinking, okay, the mind is really the interaction that people are looking for. And, and that's kind of birthed a lot of what we even have now, schools, um, our sanctums, a lot of the stuff is just based on this verbal communication. However, when we look under the surface, we find actually people are not coming for necessarily the wisdom, they're actually coming for the feeling because feeling is a far more superior sense than anything else. <clears throat> so obviously if I asked 
what would you rather do? Would you rather have something that you can just think about or would you rather have something that you can feel? Obviously, you would choose at this stage something that you can feel. So when we start understanding how to activate our body, we know that we need to move from just thinking about what it should feel like. Move that thinking about what it should feel like right into feeling. And we do that with application, actual training. Okay. So the first thing is what I'm calling the binaural ring. Okay. The binaural ring. And I had to bring this up because you need to understand how the technology works and why it works. That way, if you have any questions about it yourself or somebody else does, you also can explain to them why. So we already know, many know about binaural frequencies, right? And it's like, beyond that, like the word or the term, do you know about binaural frequencies per se? Yeah, I know about them because they're basically saying, I heard about them. I did sit through a video where they explained them. So now I know about them. But I guess that would be more like belief because to truly know something, it means that you, you, you've kind of immersed yourself in it. To truly know a person, you kind of must throw yourself completely into that person to, to, to really know them, right? So to truly know frequency, you have to throw yourself all the way into it. And it's easy because you actually are frequency, so at least meets you halfway. But the reality here is, is that to feel frequency I feel like it's important to know, be aware of the ring because what frequency is, is frequency, as you see it uh, visually, is a wave like this, right? But in reality, it's more like when you put your finger into a pool, right? So when you put your finger into a pool of water, it ripples out. And if you looked at that ripple from the side and you saw that up and down, Obviously, that's the up and down that is being recorded on frequency charts, right? So life, if you looked at it from the side or if you basically cut it down the center and look into, looked at it from the side, you would see the ridges of its record. And that ridge or that record or that shape is the frequency of the entire existence at any given moment. So what the binaural ring is, is the binaural ring is, is when you're dealing with basic frequencies such as delta, theta, et cetera, what you'll find is, is you'll find if you're, if you're using a real frequency generator that is configured properly, is you'll be able to see this ball, if you may, or energy, you'll be able to hear it, excuse me, inside of the frequency if you pay attention. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you this in a moment, and this is what you're gonna be listening for. So th this, movement of the frequency is really one of the most instrumental things that make binaural beats work, especially specific binaural beats. Because what it's literally doing is, is it's, it's simulating, even, it's funny, it's simulating something that's already going on. Already your field is moving and there is like a, you know, a movement of a force that is going around you like this, that is you. So when you hear that in frequency, and you, and you get uh, it through a binaural beat, it begins to simulate to your mind what that even would be looking like at that frequency. And this is all that's really needed in one tense to really understand how to oscillate through frequencies. Is first to catch the frequency, as we'll, we'll see here in a moment. Catch the, the actual course of the frequency. And once you get onto the course of the frequency, and you begin to increase the frequency, stay on and, and, and do not increase the frequency higher than where you can track the movement of that energetic ball. Okay, so it's 2021 and I'm going to break this down and build it back up for you in the language of 2021. When you're listening to frequency, it's important that you tap frequency into your feeling not your mind. Because if you tap frequency into your mind, you're going to go, I wonder what this frequency can do. I wonder if I, you're going to be wondering because that's all the mind does. It's just a wonderland, right? What you need to do is you need to actually engage feeling because feeling's another thing that you have and it's far more useful for interpreting what's going on. In fact, most of what we experience we, that we really pay attention to comes through feeling right? So now you're engaging the feeling and not the mind. And you're doing that by jumping on what we could just call the ball. 
what the ball is, is that just like as they're saying cycles per second, right? It's how many times it's coming around per second. What? How many times what is coming around per second? And if you really focus, you'll hear it. It's like you'll be able to visualize this thing that's going. And you'll hear it in a moment. Then you'll notice as you start going up in the frequency, this ball starts moving faster. But because now you can see, you can see it in your mind's eye, it only takes a moment for you to realize that somehow this is also stirring up your energetic field too, physically, right? And the gap here, meaning in, in getting it to work, is just your level of being able to stay focused on the frequency rather than the monkey mind and everything else going on while you're doing your practice. Because you'll start seeing how this is not just a freak. These frequencies are not just frequencies that we just came up with like a song. These frequencies are everywhere, play everywhere, and are a part of everything. So it's not something that you have to believe in or trust in. It just is. And I just could say that in this royal society that they've created today, where this Raja knowledge, where basically it's only for the royalty, it's crazy how, man, this knowledge to people becomes just not even really useful anymore because it's like we're diverted thinking about all the time so many different other things. So it's like, I feel like that what the, when it's called the royal knowledge, I feel like what it means is, is not that it's for royalty, it's that it takes the consciousness into royalty, into a higher stage. By first bringing you into an awareness of how to get control of your feeling and shut off your mind. Then by taking it through like these crutches, now, just articulating this as best as possible because I want to make sure this is clear for everyone. These crutches that where you remember again that you have a field that is spiraling around your body and it just is. And you have the ability to speed up and slow down that field. And when learning how to oscillate this field, because it's more like something that's like this, the more you learn how to oscillate this field, the more you feel your energy shifting. And then some say, well, what can it do? I visit places where that's the instructions. <laughs> I'm not trying to figure out what can it do on this side. I'm just trying to figure out the door to it. How can I want to go somewhere else but not leave where I am? Right? That's like a paradox. So I need to put myself into a certain state where it's like, okay, it's about me now. I need to shut everything off, shut off the brain because that's where all that stuff is. The brain is not the mind. It's not the consciousness. It's just your own backup for this life, for this moment. And you turn that off as much as possible by just giving it a task. It's, it's, it's in itself, it's a motor. So it needs a task. And that task to it is follow the ball. <laughs> I can hear it. I hear it moving. Now I can see it. Now I'm turning off the brain and, I, and it's there. I got it. It's there. Now I'm going to raise the frequency up. So let's do that. Because what you would be doing then is you would be engaging the quantum drive. Remember, quantum is really something. It has a specific zip code. It, it's a word, so we know how to reach it. It's through a sound. The same way it sounds when a frequency is building from delta all the way to gamma in that scale is the same sound of a quantum drive. You have a quantum drive, just so happens. It's one of those cars sitting in the garage. It's like I walk in. And you're trying to show me this new car, this new Tesla. And I'm like, is that a quantum drive in the back? <laughs> is, can, I, can I check it? Oh, yeah, that belonged to my dad. I never, you know, there's lots of new stuff. I, you know, I haven't seen that old thing. It's like, man, this is a quantum drive you have sitting here. Do you know how to make this thing work? 
I don't know. This is literally what we're dealing with right now with the being that we're in because the frequencies of how the quantum drive sounds is actually how to turn it on and how to put it into gear and how to take it into different places. So let's listen. Now with binaural beats, and again, this is also for you because I'm, I'm gonna give you the actual software. So you need to do this on your side. I'm just giving you the instructions. You're going to need headphones because that's the whole thing with binaural beats is in one ear, it's playing, let's say if it's 4.5 hertz, in the next ear, it may be playing like 4.35 hertz. And what this creates is it creates actual, what the, the mind conceives is a physical oscillation. Now, they go deep into this stuff in VR. That's what I'm saying. There's careers around this stuff now. It's just people are using it, you know, to, I guess to barrel themselves deeper into the mess. But the knowledge and the wisdom of antennas, the knowledge and wisdom of these binaural beats and environment and immersion is out. It's just people are using it to create video games. And it's like, oh, the mind is only good for playing a video game. <laughs> it's not that the mind can actually be taken and be utilized through that same power and forces and cause that external phenomena, is it? And of course it is. Now, in a chaotic mind, you create chaos and then chaos destroys you and it just happens faster. <laughs> in a harmonic mind or a being that is ready to go through the experience with themselves, keep expanding and imploding, actually here in the frequency of truth, this will last you through infinity, this awareness. Because once you teach yourself this language and it starts to become where you can intone it, meaning that you don't actually need a device to tell you what alpha sounds like because you've been listening to alpha so long, you're able to, to, to mimic the intonation or basically it wouldn't even be a mimic because this is the original, the tone of alpha in your consciousness, you would slide right into that frequency. So training wheels first is, you go and you learn the frequency by itself rather than mixing frequencies. And we've even bought a way today for you to be able to monitor this because remember all this is going on in the mind. So one would say, well, shoot, how am I going to even monitor all this? And it turns out that technology has gone far enough to put one of these kind of things in the hands of the consumer. But this is step one. Step one, you go and grab, and the links are in the description, the binaural generator. Now, the one specifically that I'm using, because I can't cross-check this over a thousand devices, et cetera, so you may have to do your own work. If you want something, you'll find it. Uh, one of these things may take, because the one I'm using is on iOS, so some may be over there and say, oh, I'm on Android. So you need to find the equivalent. I sent a couple links in the chat for you to do your investigation. I don't have any Androids around me. And, or you'll find somebody that has one, whether they have an iPad or something, you'll find, you know, we're at the eighth, ninth generation of these devices. There'll be one laying around somewhere, $50 or something. You know, just check the compatibility and just grab some of these things just for tools, not to talk on, but just the app store and the compatibility that it has. So the first thing that we're gonna look at here second there we go okay so i'm opening up this app called binaural the link is in the description and what i'm going to do here is one second one second it's not showing the screen that i'm on let me just get the back one to that okay let me just reset this real quick that in just a second. So this app's link is in the description. And what it does is, is it gives you clean binaural beats in the five frequencies that we're predominantly using in our first scale. Try this one more time.
Okay, so let me just reset this all together. Give me one quick second. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so give me one. Uh, I got another backup plan. So let me go to my backup plan because there's always got to be one. All right, so we're going to go over here to our frequency oscillator. We're going to turn on our super source here. And I just got one. Let me try to plug in another phone, everyone. Just give me one quick second longer. All right. Let's throw this. Let's throw this up there for you. Hold on. Okay, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going with my presentation today. Um, I have this app installed, and as you can see, it's on the screen, but it's frozen. <clears throat> and I'm just trying to get it to unfreeze itself, but it doesn't look like it's responding. just kind of frozen on one of the screens. Try one more time. Yeah, it's just kind of static. <laughs> That's funny. So basically, it's basically frozen on the screen. So let me actually just try another port. Now I can outsmart this thing. One second. All right. So... I'm gonna put it on channel five. Oh my goodness, it's still on channel five. What is that? Okay. All right, we're just gonna take a quick intermission because it is important to understand how to activate the quantum drive since that is why we're here today. And uh, let me just take a moment and see why it's mirroring uh, the same picture and uh, see if I can get this thing reset so that way we can understand this pathway to the frequency. So give me one quick second and we'll come forward. All right. 
Yeah, it's just the stuff we're sitting on all day. And it's like, you know, I had got it ready so early and then it just, I guess it burned into itself. So we're going to go ahead and, and give this another shot. Looks like things are working. So we're going to dive into this binaural app and there it is. So, okay, so let's let's just, you know, give a center right back into the space again and, and just talk about what we're doing. So we're detaching from the mind and we're focusing on our energy field through frequency because the same pace that you oscillate through your consciousness when you're visualizing real frequencies is the same pace that your frequency will start raising in your body. And then it will bring the cycles per second of your actual auric field into the same frequency of whatever tone that you're actually playing. And in that state, especially if you dial in frequencies at certain times, you will become perceptive of what alpha means to you, what gamma means to you. Because when I say gamma means that we're all connected, this is the space that we would, that still me like giving you a map of it. You would need to know what that actually feels like, right? And then you'll also even notice that in certain frequencies, because gamma is anything over 30 hertz, that you may actually feel more overwhelmed than you do feel like that this is actually taking you into a certain stage, state. And it's because you have to really work with yourself and climb a ladder, the climb the ladder of yourself. This is why we also talk about that in the other frequencies such as delta and uh, theta, there's a lot of groundwork that you can do on restoring yourself. And that's kind of, kind of suggested more so than always just playing around in the high frequencies. Even though the higher frequencies, like let's say your alphas and your thetas, they can be very useful for helping you in your daily life to deal with something that's already a bit dialed, dialed up, like your job you know, five kids, uh, a pandemic, these kind of things, and giving you a space to actually zone into what can be very, very instrumental in an external space to create a solution. So beta is not a bad frequency either, even though that's where most beings in the planet reside. It's the most crowded for sure. It is anxiety and fear is also in betas, high betas. There's also low beta which is actually a, another stage where things in the physical reality, for those that are making it happen, they exhibit those kind of frequencies when doing something in the external space. And then what you're doing is you need more or less a calibration of what, what does any of that even sound like? And you're going to speak directly to your consciousness about not just what it sounds like, but what it feels like. Because the ear is really in itself more directly connected to the feeling than the eyes are. Right. So in this ear, you're going to be able to visualize and create a complete connection with your energy field. And then you're going to be able to oscillate and bring it into a higher frequency. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off. With some form here, because this is an instructional. Um, this is this is an instructional um, gathering. Let me turn this down a little bit. So it's not about me being able to achieve, you know, certain states with the equipment that I'm showing. And it's not also about uh, me sitting here forever on a 20 minute meditation with you. I just want to show you certain things that are going to be useful. So if I have this this phone here, by the way. Right. And I have this on three screens because I felt that it was best to do it this way. Let me also uh, let me just get on this one screen real quick. Boom. So if I if I have this phone here. Right. And, and I'm in meditation. Right. It's easy for me to even go like this. Now, I know some people's like, man, you meditating with the phone in your hand? I was like, look, okay, get, get yourself together. If you, if you, because you're gonna need to be in a meditative state and you're no, gonna need the frequency, but it's gotta be in your headphones. And if it's on your phone and you haven't recorded it already, then you're gonna need to be able to access your phone as you're oscillating through these frequencies. So a suggestion is if, if, you, if you can basically create a, a pattern a frequency for yourself. You would download this app, right? And you would record directly from the phone. That's why it's almost like the phone would be in the loop for a while. You need to professionally record from the phone into a track, right? And then you can maybe play that track from something else. So do you see how, like, I just try to make this as simple as possible for myself. If I could record this, I plan to record like a night set. 
So that way, because they don't have that feature yet here that I can start off like in the first two hours of sleep in Delta, like just, you know, I'm taking down the body completely from a, from a, to dial out of whatever happened in the day. So I know I'm going to ride it into Delta for two hours and then I'm going to start sliding from Delta into Theta and around the time that I should be kind of coming back around into this reality. And I can time that properly, especially if I'm going to sleep all the, at the same time all the time. So what I'm doing is, and I'm going to turn this on, and I need to do a sound, sound check on this real quick. One second. Okay, so that sounds like that the sound is, is what I said it to earlier. So I had already done uh, leveled out the sounds. Let me just check the, the amps. Yeah, okay, so it's not aggressive. I don't want to you know, blow anybody's eardrums and speakers out. Let's take this up just a little bit. Okay, so I trust that you can hear me and you can hear me over the frequency. And, and this is, um, so we're sitting in Delta, okay? And Delta is at the point, uh, well, point one all the way up. Now watch as you start listening to this. And again, you know, you may have to put in some headphones yourself. I did activate stereo audio and professional audio and the audio should run properly. So you should get the binaural effect. Now, what you're listening for here is like I was saying earlier, you'll start to hear something move or see something moving. It's like you, you're combining your senses. You're hearing something. You're seeing something in your mind's eye, but you just know it's there. That's all you're doing. Now watch. So you see how you can even hear it more in there. It's like, it's whopping more. Let's keep going. You see, you can hear it. It's like, it's the higher pitch of the tone. Now remember, this is not super complex, so it's very important that, you know, I just get you to be very clear on what you're listening for here. Okay. Now, some are saying I don't hear anything right now. Now, remember, if you don't have headphones on, this is a two-channel thing. But also, remember, you can, you can also download this app. That's why the links are in the description. You can put it on yourself. And what you're listening for now, I'm going to keep going with explaining this, is you would hear this. If you didn't hear it now, it meant some, something was happening with your stereo sound. You were on mono, so you were getting it, but you weren't hearing it. So when you get to app yourself, you put the headphones on, even if it's those Bluetooth joints, like those, what are those, the uh, uh, Galaxy Buds, you know what I mean? The twos with, you know, they're flat. I don't, can't say you can lay completely on them, but they're flat. And they got good sound and you can hear it is moving. Now you're starting to realize this is a warp drive. This is what energy sounds like when it's taking off. And if you got on, because remember, you got to start off at the foundation. And if you stepped on and you were still on that circle, Now you would be really on the circle. And this is a great exercise because it's almost fun to listen to it. But as you keep going, especially if you're in a meditative position and you reach the meditative state, it'll tap right into your energy field because it's on the frequency of your energy field. Now notice on the screen, let me put that on. So notice I'm in beta now, right?
and again, you know, there may depend on the clarity of the stream and all types of stuff. You may be hearing this, but I'm demoing this out for you. So you can understand what's going on now. Personally, me, I'm not dealing with any of these frequencies yet. I'm sitting in here because I noticed that there seems to be this huge craze to get more energy, to get more power, to get smarter, to be more. And I feel like I'm watching the play because I'm seeing that when people do that, they're nowhere near prepared to be able to take on what that thing equates to of operating with energy like that. And I believe that fools rush in. And what this is, and, and, and in this society, they want everybody to crash dummy because it creates more life, creation, excitement, et cetera. It's for everybody else watching with popcorn as you're self-destructing yourself. Rinse, rewind, repeat. And what I see is, is that it's our foundation that we need to be working on first. Be patient. Instead of going right to the crown chakra all the time, show up for the feet. <laughs> And then start doing the complete work like you're really creating and sculpting something. Right. And you want this to be perfect because it's you. And you go from neophyte, like, just give it to me. <laughs> I'm playing it tonight. You know, I got it on 100 decibels. <laughs> the whole house, woof, 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 woof. the neighbors is tripping. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> the one that's like, OK, I would miss it like that because my my whole being, my consciousness, my soul wouldn't it be really in tune. It would be looking for another external stimulus to award me for the next treat that I've given it. I would be getting income instead of outcome. <laughs> Let me take this for myself and heal myself and what's going on. So you can hear the frequencies, you can hear the drive come on, right? And so now the next thing is, okay, well, some may say, well, how do I know if it's working, because there's those that need that double confirmation. I trust that for those who are just wanting to do this for themselves and not incur any kind of expenses beyond the phone, the app is free. You do it this way, right? But if you want to floor it a little bit more, because, you know, there's those of us who ride in Donzi. So there's like, okay, so what else can I do? This would be called step two. OK, so I want to make it very clear. Step one is basically free, especially if you could, if you don't have an iPhone, you can go grab somebody's right. You get it on there. You start your meditations inside of headphones. You start syncing. You got your finger on the knob. Remember, this is like a guitar. Right. Let me show it up here again. Bam. Right. So you notice how when I put my finger on this, let me turn it down so that. Hold on, folks, eardrums out. So let me turn it down right here, okay? Okay, so watch this. So you see how my finger is on this like a string. You see this? So I'm moving my finger, and what I do is when I start meditating, you know, I'm I'm kind of I'm holding my finger like um So I'm holding my finger like, like this and I'm sliding down the string. And this also seems to be perfect with what's going on on the other hand. Cause my other hand, you know, if I'm closing the circuit is like this anyway. So I'm just using the closed circuit hand to be on the screen. And then I go in and I can get in so fast because of being familiar with the frequencies and the wavelengths internally, this just becomes the easier fun way. And if I'm coming out of a day and it's super wild, at any point, I can choose what frequency I'm going to dive into beyond the super wildness of what goes on in this reality. And it assists, it's very therapeutic for not having to just absorb all the buffoonery going on here, especially when you're, when you're working to keep yourself stable and also assist others, right? But it's a language. And when you learn this language, it's going to start speaking to you, meaning you'll emulate certain sounds inside of your dream. So instead of speaking a language, you'll speak Greek, <laughs> psych. You'll basically be speaking these codes that create everything. 
And then you'll learn from there what kind of measures and formulas can be created with that level of power because it's a pure power, meaning that to speak in frequency, it lacks a distortion of what goes on in the mind. If it doesn't sound right, it can't project and create anything in a higher perfected space. You see? It just, all those imperfect things and those distortions, they're eradicated there. That's where we live to be honest. That's where our souls are protected, if you may. That's the professional technology, if you may. So this next thing, I'm gonna have to take this off. So I have a Muse device, okay? So many are aware of Muse. They build this, um, they build this device that basically helps you with meditation. And they have, this is like the third edition Right. So you'll actually find, I think the lowest that you can have is like a 2014 or 2016 Muse on eBay for, I think sometimes they're down as low as $50 to $80. Okay. And while wow, this thing is already connected. So what I'm bringing up here is that this is stage two. Stage two is that, or step two, if you, if you need to mind map yourself, because you'll also notice that just because you see Delta doesn't necessarily mean that you're going into a delta frequency. It means that that is the strong current coming from your brain. And when you start being able to pair your strong current thoughts or feelings, you're actually able to even just use strong current thought feelings. Or if you can pinpoint your subtle state, you're able to drop into your subtle state, as I'm going to show here in a minute, on cue, like almost literally becoming what people would call dead in a moment. And this assists because at times, see when things are going on around you, everything around you is, is trying to feed off of itself as pre, for its presence, that everyone is confirming why they're even there. So if you move yourself out of that spectrum, you basically become invisible to them. And when certain things are happening, and it's just, I guess it's a, a depth class today, when certain things are happening, to move out of the space right away really fast, from everyone's visual and stimulus and everything could be very useful. But to do that, you would basically be almost flatlining yourself. So your heart would almost stop to a point where it's not just that time slows down, time starts to just get weird. And for people on the other side of it, they can't seem to see things in the weird time space. That's the only thing I could, only way I can explain it. So if you wanted to see where that point is in your mind, you would need. A, a meter equivalent to a, a, a EEG meter. So it just so happens that Muse, they didn't put it in their device. I was like, everybody complained. I don't know what the, what's going on. This is the third version. And they have no real time brain reader, brain monitor inside of their software. So another guy named James, <laughs> another parallel James, decided to create one. And Put it out and it does cost $15, but it allows you in real time to monitor your, monitor your brain waves accurately. There is nothing else out there like that. You would actually think that this would be something everybody would be going for, but there isn't. This is, there's, there's no consumer grade. There's only medical grade devices that generally allow you to do this. And of course, they come with that medical grade price tag and you need to probably be a doctor to even buy it. So it doesn't mean you just need the money. It means that you need to now have a doctor say that they're going to be the one using it. So we're going to turn on this EEG, which I think it's already on, and it's been on, so we need to hurry up since it's maybe running down on battery. We're going to look at how you can actually watch the wavelengths. I'm going to take this off. So now, in the comfort of my own home, let me see if I can put these headphones back on. I'm going to look real silly then. They'd be like, you know, somebody's just going to come in right now. And then I'd be like, oh, my goodness, what is he up to? He's always up to something. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> it's just funny. I, I, I live vicariously in many ways, just like being that fly on the wall in a situation in the, in the back street of Mogadishu, you know, somewhere. It's just like... Earth is, is quite interesting. So as you can see, like there's basically just a lot of current running through my brain right now, 
right? I'm on a show. And as I said before, the, the mind doesn't just play one frequency. It's playing all of them at the same time. So it's taking me some stimulus. I'm working the board over here, right? Like we just had a huge dropout with the technology. The screen was frozen. I got to figure it out, you know, and you're watching numbers just die, but you did have uh, something to actually give to everyone. So, you know, all of that is going on and that that's way up there, right? And, but what happens when I do this? You see, when I, if, if, if I talk, if I think, it's going up. But if I let go, And that's very important, I believe, for, you know, someone who is, is a master in the flux to understand how to do, like to just drop out because you will find yourself in life, especially as you wax stronger in, in awareness, just being a total navigator of a space if you can always control the energy that is moving in that space. And what it often means is, is that because energies are like waves, when there's a strong frequency coming, it comes through, right? And then like the Wu Wei, you have to know how to kind of sidestep that energy rather than hitting that energy head on, right? And sidestepping that energy is the equivalent of flatlining your brain in this, which of course is extremely difficult to do if you're talking. But if you stop talking and just give it a moment, You can see it could be achieved. And now with this software though, because that's the main thing that we're here talk, to talk about today, this is my, the mind mapping software. The link is also in the description. You can actually, so because all this after a while for a person is like, okay, you're gonna download the software, you're gonna get the music, you're gonna hook this thing up and then you're gonna look at it and you're gonna be like, okay, <laughs> what am I looking at? What do I do? And it's gonna be another one of those things that you buy and it sits over there in the corner, right? We don't want that to happen. So as I said earlier, the most key fundamental part of controlling the consciousness is actually to be able to know the frequencies, right? To know beta, to know what that sounds like and to go through that process. And it's very fun. When your energetic field starts to pick up based on the frequencies you're oscillating through, man, you start having fun with yourself, right? And then when you're ready to, you know, maybe hit the initiate stage of the process, right? You now need to kind of check your work. You need to know basically if you are concentrating or focusing and you can hold a constant alpha. What that would look like is not something that you necessarily see here on the chart in real time. This is real time data. You need to see this in a broader spe spectrum, like over two or three hours, over a few days. And what James has done is he's created a way for you to export that. So basically you can go here to, I believe it's this one. Now that's how to change different perspectives, right? <laughs> There's the crazy one. Like you just got to invite your mom in a room. Let me see which one it is right here. And be using this one and be like, look, mom, I cracked the code to the whole thing. Mom, look, it's right here, mom. I got us. We on our way. You know, that spectrum, right? But anyway, so this just changes the spectrum. What we're looking for, I think that's just let me know how it's streaming through. And I think it's this one. There we are. Okay. So this is how I begin the recording, right? So that's the, the record button. So that white, that, that red dot was the record button. And now what it's doing, and it can do this for hours. It's recording this chart. Okay. And when it's recording this chart, it's then going to, at a certain point, when you stop it, just export a CSV to you, a zip, I had it zip filed, so I would send this to myself, right? And then when you get that, you can upload it into, into the website, and I'm not gonna show that here, they have a website at Mind Mapping, and it will bring you back a grid. And then you'll be able to, act, it'll bring you back the whole chart of all the data. And then you'll be able to look at the data. So while this may be a little bit uncomfortable to sleep with, uh, for sure, definitely with these headphones, it wouldn't happen. It's not that uncomfortable to meditate with, right? And then also, if you can get a few hours of sleep in at a certain point, and you can get a mind map if you're interested in this kind of thing, then it could tell you some interesting things about yourself, especially if you can map a journey. Like, 
you understand how you got into something. Now, obviously, nobody's going to be sitting back reading charts. <laughs> well, maybe I will. But <laughs> nobody's going to be sitting back reading charts to, in, to determine when they're going to enter into a dream state again, right? However, when you learn frequencies, if you're able to see the frequency state that you're actually in where the dream was going on, you can slide back into that space. More importantly, generally, in the morning that it takes place. Inducing a theta state or what, they, what you would say is manually inducing a theta state. You could do that to try to return to a dream that maybe you want to end a different way or change certain things, right? Okay. So this just means that for all of us, obviously, you have your own internal cosmos. We trust that you have the opportunity to fully explore yourself in this space and not get too overwhelmed with all of the things going on around you with others. You start focusing on yourself, especially during these times, especially if you have some kind of supplemental income and things happening for you right now. This is the perfect opportunity to become sovereign. Also, in this world that we're living in today, there are few things that will actually give us some advantage, especially uh, in advantage in our spiritual aspects of self uh, that I feel have come forward. Spiritual technology is here to basically highlight the things that can do that. I don't encourage an overwhelming response to overall technology because it is a plagiarization of exactly what we can do internally. But sometimes, as I mentioned in the beginning, when you're already speaking a certain language, it's like going down a path. It's often better to go back up that same path and then continue your journey. So right now, since others are looking for what I said was analytical data about where their consciousness is, there's only one software out. There's only one device that links with that software. That's how tough it is to find. If you even thought about doing it, if you even thought about what would be the use of it. And what I'm explaining very clearly is that the world or all or the mind is basically these frequency states. And to truly know the world, to say you knew it, it meant that you knew these frequencies. We develop a relationship together, they are how everything is formed. What greater friends to hang out with? We listen to each other and then we sing together. What they are, I am too. Facts, <laughs> right? I don't got to worry about no statue. This is the highest refined form, right? There's, there's emulations of this. There's reflections of this. People have built statues. People have created certain things. They've created patterns. They've done all sorts of stuff. But the, the highest, one of the highest purified levels of it it's just this tone, just the sound, just the vibration. And I start there. I even know my start is at Delta. I start working on my pillars, my feet, my legs, my knees. Right? I start looking into myself for this restoration process. I am Trimurti. I have a way to bring life, but I also have a way of sustaining life. And I also know how to remove things and move stuff out of my space. It's very important for us to see that sometimes we think when we're removing things that we're losing something. Remember, unity and good, you don't have to confirm. It's always going to be unified. But just like a detox, moving things out of your space can create more potential for you, more growth, higher frequency. That is exactly opposite to what most people think. <laughs> so it's a paradox. Get used to it. Understand that you have another floating knob in all of this. You don't have to take any of this serious. You can just laugh and be like, okay, man, I got you, man. Y'all good on that. He's like, yeah, yeah, man, this all coming down. It's like, man, I'm good. It's like, if it comes down, it's going to go back up again. <laughs> it's like the crypto charts. If, if, if it's going to be an end, that means it's the beginning. And then even in beginning are stuck between nothing. Nobody knows where anything came from, but knows it, it had to start somewhere. But the sheer proof that we're here proves that it didn't have to start. So there's no start. So what are you doing something like that? Do you get mad? Do you get angry? Or do you adapt? Create your world. I know people right now, they can't create their world. I see them. I look at them. I feel them. I work every day to bring some type of application or eventually bring some type of application to them. I know this is a real world. This real world is surrounded by real problems. I've been doing this for 11 years, dropping gems every day, wholehearted, full on in this no disclaimers, no holding back. And I'm still going 
but you see how far we're getting, right? I've already traversed within, but externally it's like, yo, keep swimming. To preserve your life force is what's gonna allow you to climb the external Mount Maru with the rest of the human beings. If you're an avatar, you need to use everything in your disposal to keep charging up and stay rejuvenated, stay encouraged. Be the inspiration. Don't let people really see you if they don't have to all down and out and all confused and they're the ones that depend on you, you throw them off. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like there's a, there's a sanctum, there's, a, there's elders, there's wisdom, there's knowledge. Sometimes if you throw your grievance on someone or something and they can't handle your grievance, it crushes them. There's always a place that you can take your grievance, more importantly within. <laughs> This is what I'm experiencing. I'm at that phase right now. I don't know what's going on in the world and why people are not taking on the knowledge and blah, 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 blah. Yo, you out there, you, come on over here. Come back in the side of yourself. Forget why the world, why aren't you? Oh, I got it already. I'm, I'm good. Whoa, if you had it already, your entire environment, when you look out right now, like when I look out, I see all green. I see flowers. I see wind, I see all of these beautiful things. I don't see anything that I don't want to see. And here's the interesting, like, it doesn't mean that I don't want to see maybe a New York. Like, I, I'm a connoisseur of life. I may want to be just right smack dab in the middle of uh, Istanbul, Morocco on full blown, right, you know, you're just there, just if that's where I want to be. But if I'm there and I'm in fear, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm fighting something, that is not the freq that's not the frequency of a true experience. And so that's what we get an opportunity to do now. Once again, your ancestors have come through and given another gift to all of us. As pay attention to these frequencies, and if you really understand how the mind works, then you would have already known this already. Take some time. Look at the rest of the symbols. We went through alpha. We went through de delta and theta. What does alpha look like? What does beta look like? The busy bee. Why? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what, what, is, what is the gamma looking like? Why? You know, if, if you wanted to spend time doing something that will benefit you, because you can then consolidate that back to, okay, I'm jumping into gamma for about 20 minutes during my meditation. Another thing about the app that I gave you, the binaural app, is there's a, there's a, a setting inside of here. You see how you go to settings and you can say mix with other apps. And when you do that, it plays, I think it was even playing on top of YouTube, which is like taboo for YouTube. You know, they are like nobody playing over the top of them. But you play, you can play over the top of anything, including your music, including your workout apps, right? So these things are gems to me as far as we got to see a technology and not much of it is really useful for, but for this stuff, I'm in. Because I'm like, for me to see my brain patter at night and to know, like when I drip down, to know what that feels like. Also, they call this is also called um, brain computer to brain interface. Okay, that was the last note here because we're done today. I'm sure there was enough. Your cup runneth over. Brain the computer interface. Okay, so just what can be gained from the knowledge that was actually brought forth in, in, in the creation of brain and computer interface. And this, of course, is like basically plugging the mind into a computer, right? And so there's different modes of being able to do that. Um, and that's, that study and that research is mostly, you know, definitely not public, right? However, it was pulled out just recently because they wanted to start using this and bringing it back around in VR again. And this is being able to play video games with your mind right, which was an extreme failure. <laughs> like Epoch set out with this agenda to try to create games that people could play with their mind. And it's because the signals that are coming from most people's minds can't be differentiated by that person. It, it, it wasn't a good meld. And the company, they're still alive, but they should have tanked. But there was enough venture capitalist money for them to still believe that one day would have a use. So now that VR has become popular, they they want to bring it around again, but for simple stuff like tracking your hand movements or where you would, where, where you would, it's kind of like trying to understand what you're going to do before you do it lightly 
to help things that already can do it, do it better. So let's say, for instance, if there's a if you have a VR headset on, it could have a tracking array in front of the headset and it can already see your hands in the tracking array. And, and you could try to use that alone to create a way of tracking uh, hand movements inside the VR. And it would be it would work to a certain degree, but it would be a little sloppy. So what they'll do is, is they'll put in another sensor and this sensor will kind of tie into wavelengths only, delta, theta, alpha, beta, gamma. And then they'll find the most occurring frequency of when you're trying to grab something, the most occurring frequency formula, formula of when you're trying to grab something. And then they will look for that stimulus as something a few seconds before to kind of understand more. He's just trying to grab it. Now, remember, they can program all this stuff in. There's no extra work. It's a machine. And then it makes the software, it's like, okay, it's grabbing now. And that's what these systems are, are, that's what they're using these systems for right now, okay? So in conclusion, they, all, they noticed that there were a few, there were a few markers, and I'll, I'll get them next time for our, our next Spiritex build. Um, if you enjoy this, definitely hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It does let me know, okay, they're watching this. But... What, what you're capable of doing, excuse me, excuse me I kind of lost my train of thought with that. Dang, I did it. Uh, no, no. I had to ask for the like and it just, it destroy everything. Did you see my brainwave when I asked for the like? You see that? This is what we have to, this is what we have to be on top of. No, I'm joking. Okay, so, okay, center and self. So, man, I wish I had some, okay, somebody in the chat. Because, man, I, I got to with, with the overload mode. Somebody in the chat say, okay, you were talking about this, okay? Because I, I think my, uh, my head over here is, is being squeezed a little too tight. And uh, so I was talking about feedback. <laughs> Everyone needs to start somewhere. All right, so I guess I'm not going to get any comments on where I actually left off just a minute ago. So I guess I've been on here for like two or three hours now. So I start needing a little bit of uh, Ariata Matt. I guess maybe that was what this was all about. So there is one more, I guess. Okay, so there it is. Okay, caught my train again. I was like, man, you got to wait for that ball to come back around again. What I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to keep doing this spiritual technology build. And then the next time that we come in, I wanted to to hone in a bit more on this technology along with there's another there's another unit that just emits this. I'm experimenting right now with it just emits these frequencies and waves and I want to see, you know, with the monitor here how much that's beginning to affect the brain. So there needs to be some type of research here. Um, but to give me encouragement to keep going with this if this is something that you'd like to see, then I will determine that by the likes and if it's just Lots of thumbs down, then we'll try something else. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like we're going into this for a minute until we can completely map out the brain. So, okay. So I think somebody's saying, oh, company using in VR, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I still haven't gotten that link yet to what exactly completely I was talking about. But before I disintegrate into chaos over here, because I am super worn out in the mind, I need to kind of take a moment and back off all of this for a minute. I will say that, remember, this journey that we're on is infinite. For you personally, whatever you can do to keep allowing yourself to go on and encouraging yourself to reach into a greater level of harmonic within your own being, stay encouraged. There's a lot of stuff out here. Some of this stuff can be applied. Some of this stuff, throw it away. You're the one that determines that. Our gift can also be given. What we've learned about ourselves, our experience, how things have happened for us in this space is extremely useful. I work the most to make sure that we can create a space that what others are doing and what others are about can be shared openly. That's what we've created. Sovereignty Mentorship has been an amazing journey for all of us. It's been three years. We placed a lot of the knowledge and wisdom that we weren't able to bring into YouTube. They generally a log format builds deep stuff about self and how we work, you know, that's there for you if you decide that you're ready to make that journey within. Also, we advise learning more about your uniqueness and who you truly are. We bought that together inside of Actionables, inside of the Secret Energy platform. Phase one and phase two for you is absolutely free. 
And then now what we've bought is additional tools and instruments to allow you to speak a deeper language of frequency within yourself and to experiment with the aspects of your consciousness and to try to find integers, maps, and guides to determine for you when you're on track and when you're making progress. This is just one of them. So that's what we got today, Tribe. Let me look at my last notes here. <laughs> yes, we spoke on everything here. That was actually the end of the notes. I guess we went off that cliff of, yeah, make sure that you like it and subscribe so that it jumps into others' hands. Also, remember, you know, avoid killing your mentors and those that you should be looking up to. You know, they may be needed at some stage in time. Always work with the unity code inside your consciousness, knowing that, it's a, that it is present and it is aware. And also that you can create the space that's around you at any point by shifting your consciousness. So wholeness and balance vibrations, everyone. <laughs> I'll see you soon. I'm going to work to do another one of these again because I do have some stuff. I, I kind of like, I realized what happens. I was going to go into some more stuff and then it's just, there's no notes for it. There's no slides for it. There's no nothing. And it was like, you know what, maybe we reserve this for next time we come into the space and we keep talking about this because there's a lot that's revealed from the brain and the consciousness. And then lastly, so it doesn't slip away, there, there is one thing in a note about conductivity. I need to actually pull up um, a web page here for both of these. Give me one quick second. Let me take this off real quick. There we go. All right, that thing's got to be on. I had to take the thing off. It has to be on a little tight, but I don't think it has to be as tight as I had it on. But anyway, I didn't want to go through the whole adjustment process. So I wanted you to check this out. And what this is, is cell food. And what cell food is, is basically the equivalent of the juice that a human battery would need. I always remember it's always great to keep a balance between your alkalines and your acids. Obviously, because we have more of an acidic situation happening, even anger and fear creates acid inside the body, tomato sauce, lots of sauces, vinegars, and things like that that are not balanced out right in the diet. They create lots of acid. And so with the body, it's best to be pH balanced, um, not so much as over alkaline. But this is, uh, I'm sure that if we just put cell food into a real battery, we would be able to power something because it's that, really that close. What's in a battery that we use today is almost assimilable for the body when it comes to the electrolytes and when it comes to the actual minerals that are inside of it. But obviously, it's just the, 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 co the causticness of a battery acid is not something you got to put in, can put in your body. But there is one for human beings, and it's called cell food. And this is something that allows the consciousness to not only recover sometimes from very exhausting situations, but it also allows even somewhat of a, a clarity with water. Um, especially if you, it's kind of like the lemon in the water, but a bit more powerful and you'll find that it actually tastes a little bit like lemons. Okay. So that's something that we'll get into a little bit more when we, um, we come in next time. The last thing is, let's see if I can find this here. Cause I always pronounce it wrong. There it is. So this website here, which is ariata.com, right? They make this mat and these mats have been around for years. In fact, even the controller and things looks like a bit old tech, but this is like a key charger for the human body. Um, we'll get into this more, like I'll do an actual segment on this, but I just wanted to make sure since I mentioned this in Clubhouse that everyone knew this is ariata.com, just like it's spelled as you see it there. And uh, literally, like you could sometimes even be exhausted, but still need to go and make it happen somewhere. You lay on this mat for like 10 to 15 minutes, you're back at it again. It literally has uh, photons. The one that I'm using actually has photons. It has uh, ions. It has PIMF, which is pulse electromagnetic frequency. And uh, it has infrared. Okay. So that's the mats. 
and those are the key chargers for the human body. There's some smaller ones. There are some that are a bit pricey for those that are like, shut up and take my money. And then there's others that look, I'm just trying to get the benefits and uh, not necessarily a big price tag. So you can go with the smaller mat. And as long as it has at least the, um, the PIMF, which I noticed to be one of the most dynamic parts of the whole application, pulse electromagnetic frequencies, and then it goes right through those amethyst, amethyst crystals. And then it just kind of, I guess, just bleeds right into the body and the body's field somehow is directly assimilable to that photonic ionic force. So that's what I have today. Wholeness and balance vibrations. I'll see everybody soon. It was great. I love to be here and I look forward to the next time we come together. Take a look at us at Sovereignty Mentorship. If you can, secretenergy.com, get your etiology wholeness. <laughs>